Welcome to the Next Dimension Podcast, your portal to an extended reality. Every week we talk about the hottest topics in XR and let you join the discussion live on MRTV. And now, get ready for another exciting episode coming up. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the Next Dimension podcast. Every week, we're going to talk about the most exciting topics of VR and AR, and most probably for the next few years, more about VR, but then also about AR. My name is Sebastian Ang. I'm the founder of MRTV. But more importantly, I'm here with my three resident guests, Gary, Steve, and Anthony, hello guys. How are you doing? Real good. Good to be Pretty here. Pretty good. Okay. Yeah, very good. Okay, great. So great to see you. So, yeah, um, Steve, Steve, you are the VR flight sim guy, <laughs> right? Hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For all of you who don't know you yet. And uh, Steve, where are you from? Where are you right now? I'm, I'm in the UK, actually, not far from Lincoln, uh, which is a sort of Lincolnshire, very flat, very boring. Uh, but uh, yeah. Not too far away from Gary, actually. Okay, cool, <laughs> yeah. cool. Gary and Gary, good to see you again. Gary from VR Roundtable, also an author of a very, very cool book called The Memory Engine. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Yep, yep. Not too far away from Steve. So uh, when this lockdown stuff gets out of the way, then maybe we can meet up for beer or something. <laughs> uh, and and because we both play a bit of guitar, maybe we can have a jam as well. <laughs> yeah. Create a new intro for the podcast. Yeah, eh? that would be good. That would be good. <laughs> and of course, Tony, Tony from VR365. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How's it going? Oh, yeah, really well. So, Tony Tony has an amazing channel called VR365. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, you absolutely have to do so. The link down in the description of this video. And Tony has the best rants ever. <laughs> so, you absolutely have to check him out. Yeah, my name is Sebastian Ang. I'm the founder of MRTV, and I'm really looking forward to this podcast. So, as I said before, this podcast is about VR and AR. AR every Saturday. We're going to be live here at 9 p.m. Central European time. That is 8 p.m. in London. That is noon in San Francisco. And that is 3 p.m. in New York City. So every Saturday, get ready for this podcast. And well, we're going to get to know each other a bit more in this first episode. We're not only going to talk about the latest topics, but in this podcast, in today's show, for sure, we also have some interesting topics. And these topics are, we're going to talk about the Medal of Honor above and beyond. Is it worth the asking price? And we have like lots of different opinions, uh, like some hate it, some love it. And there's nothing so much in between. Let's see where we're going to end up with that. Also, we're going to talk about the Rift S because the Rift S is on sale right now. Right. So is it still worth it? We're going to find out tonight. Then we're going to talk about the G2, the G2 launch. And well, it was not so great, right? Honestly speaking. So let's find out what went wrong. And well, let's let's simply talk about all these things. Yeah, so this podcast is not just live every Saturday here on this channel. It's also going to be an audio podcast. So if you would like to listen to it on your way to work or whenever, you can simply do so. And you will be able to find it on iTunes, on Google, on Alexa, <laughs> on basically everywhere that you can find podcasts. So this is something that you could also look into it. And I'm going to set this up in the following week. So also what's interesting about this podcast we're not always going to be in exactly this uh, yeah, with these guests. It's not always us four. It could be us four again, for sure. These are the resident guests that you see here right now. But it could be like other guests coming in. It could be like only two people. It could be three people. So it's very relaxed. And yeah, it's a bit different than other shows that you probably have seen before. And yeah, we're more casual and simply would love to yeah talk about VR and 
have a good time together. This is what we want to do here. Yeah, then also one really important thing about this podcast, we would like to, well, get you. We want to get your opinion. We want to involve you, the people who are watching this podcast live right now. So what we do here in this show, we have polls. So you guys, you guys who are watching this live right now, you can like vote. You can vote on different kind of topics. And then at the end of the show, we're going to reveal the results of these topics. So we want to involve you guys more. So today we have a couple of questions and we want you to answer those questions. So if you're watching this live right now, first of all, you should absolutely share, <laughs> should absolutely share the link so other people can also join live. Please do that now. Would be amazing if we could reach like 200 people watching this show. That would be amazing. That would be a great start. And well, please do vote. Check out the links in the description of this video. And today's questions for the polls are, let me read this out. So the first question is we want to get to know you a bit better. So which VR headset are you using right now? Is it the Vive, Rift CV1, Oculus Go, Rift S, Quest 1, 2, Valve Index, and so on and so forth. Simply let us know which VR headset you're using right now. The one. It, you might have a lot of them, like I have them all basically, but please tell us what is the main headset that you're using? Then the second question is, which VR headset are you going to buy or did you pre-order right now? So did you buy the Rift S on sale? Did you buy or pre or are you going to buy or pre-order the Quest 2, Reverb G2, Valve Index, Pimax 8KX, Pimax 5K Super or not going to buy anything? Then the next question is going to be, did you buy Medal of Honor above and beyond? Yes? No, but it will do soon? No, and I won't do it? We'll wait for more reviews. <laughs> so there are a couple of different answers that you could uh, yeah, simply choose. Then we want to know, I played Medal of Honor for less than one hour and I love it, like it, don't like it, absolutely don't like it, didn't play yet. Next question, I played Medal of Honor for more than three hours, so you already understand the game better and then love it, like it, don't like it, absolutely don't like it, have not played it yet. And the last question, is about the different kind of um, headset launches. What was the worst VR headset launch in history? <laughs> the Rift CV1, the Vive Pro, the Vive Cosmos, the Reverb G1, the Reverb G2, the Index, the Pimax 5K Plus or 8K or the Pimax 8KX. And we understand that probably you're waiting for your G2 right now. So don't let these feelings like, uh, like put you into the Reverb G2. Also think about the Rift, think about the Vive Pro, think about the Cosmos, think about the Pimax headsets and think about what was the worst VR headset launch in history. So I would be very happy if you would, yeah, if you would simply um, go to the polls, right? Voting is very important, <laughs> as we know, right, Tony, in the States, but also in the UK. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like voting is really important everywhere. Voting is really, really important. So, so also here in this show, voting is going to be very important. And in the end of the show, we're going to reveal, we're going to reveal the, uh, yeah, the results of these of these votes. All right. Okay, cool. Very cool. So now I think, um, yeah, that was the intro, <laughs> the intro of this first show. And yeah, now it's about time to get to know us a bit better. I believe that, well, most of us have already seen one or two or even three or all of us before, but perhaps they don't know one or two of you yet. So why don't we start a little get to know round and why don't we start with Steve? <laughs> Here we go, Steve. Hi, Steve from the UK. Hi. <laughs> so you have an amazing um, YouTube channel and it's called VR Flight Sim that. Guy. So, Very original. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you are you are very much into flight sims, I suppose. I am. I'm a bit of an aviation geek at heart, really. I suppose, and that's kind of where VR started for me. Uh, you know, my first VR headset really was just you know the CV1, like it was for many of us, I suppose. 
Um, in fact, actually, to put, actually, my first VR headset was one of those horrible phone things, you know, that you put on your face. But uh, right. that wasn't really, that wasn't proper VR. But it, it, that was enough to get me intrigued by it. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think the the idea for me was just to, you know, I love flight simulation and racing and that kind of thing. But on a on a screen, you just feel dis disconnected from it, you know. So I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to go for a CV1. I think it was during the time when they were, you know, about 400 pounds or something, which was still a lot of money. You know, it still is a lot of money. And I thought, I'm going to go for it. And yeah, I, I, I still remember that time <laughs> when I was in, uh, was it the Oculus startup uh, where, you you know, you, you got that robot. And for me, that was just completely revolutionary. I just I'll never forget that moment, what I was doing, where I was. Uh, and yeah, I was like, this is the future. Totally is the future. It sounds corny, but it really is uh, specifically for flight simulation for me. And I guess it's just kind of spiraled out of control since then, really. Uh, and now, you know, I love VR gaming as well. And I find it really hard now to go back to, they call it pancake uh, mm -hmm. games, don't they? I think that's what <laughs> one of their do, terms. I love that. It's hilarious. And, I, you know, to be honest, I totally get that. I was playing... Um, assassin's creed the other day i just started and thought you know what? i just it's not the same anymore i can't I, you know, I struggle to play just games on a monitor it just has to be that full immersion now you know um and i guess it's just yeah so i guess vr flight sim guy really it just it was actually i wasn't intending on starting a channel it was really uh because of the hp reverb g1 launch because i was so amazed by the clarity of it um and there's a couple of uh like groups i was in and i was one of the first to get it uh just because I pre-ordered, we won't go into that yeah, just yet. But anyway, uh, and I thought, well, do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do a, just a, an informal video of what I think about it. You know, is it decent? What do I think? Um, and yeah, I couldn't believe the response I got from it. And I thought, do you know what? This is all right. Well, I'll do a few more videos, and before I know it, it, it you know, it was, it's got to the point where it is now, and it's just, yeah, it's fantastic. Now you're it. famous. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a bit starstruck to be on this podcast, to be honest. But uh, yeah, it's great to be here. I mean, very, very honored to be here. It's fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. Great. So you, you, got, the, you got the CB1 and then how did it feel? Like um, when you, so you, you, the first contact game, yeah, it's incredible. I also remember it like you can you pick remember, up. Yeah. yeah, I can remember it <laughs> totally, right? You, you put in those those cassettes into that uh, yeah. thing and then there was butterflies, the butterflies as well. amazing yeah. right the butterflies yeah, were amazing. landing on your finger and i thought like okay that is absolutely <laughs> the future that's un <laughs> unbelievable but uh, you were into into flight sims before like in in the in those pancake days in those sad yeah. those sad I mean, sad pancake oh my days God. yeah those 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 bad you know black and white days <laughs> but i mean even when i was at school i was like you know part of this like flight sim group i mean how geeky is that and we had like acorns and ataris and we'd have like a, a you know an hour after school where we would play like microsoft uh fs 95 or whatever it was and it was just it looked awful and but at the time it was all about you know using your imagination and you can just imagine it being there on this little monitor so yeah i think that's why it excites it's, well yeah it excites me the most because i've seen where it's come from and where it is now you know, a lot of people getting into VR now and flight sims are very, very lucky to get to the point where, you know, you can just put a VR headset on and you are literally flying. For me, it was all just like lines and, you know, like a really crappy monitor. Um, so it's it's come such a long way. And I remember the CV1, I, when I first, because I'm quite lucky, I have an IPD of about 64, 65. And the first thing I, I didn't think it was blurry. I didn't think it was at the time. I mean, it really is now. You you know, you see the screen door. You realize where 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 we've come from. But at the time, it was just like, oh my god, this is just so amazing. Uh, and yeah, I think um, when I did my first actual flight. In fact, actually, when I first did my first flight in VR, I felt quite sick. Actually, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm quite happy to admit that. Do you, do you remember the um, the space? astronaut thing in oculus i think it was like a free thing i don't know, uh, remember wait. yeah i remember doing that that's it that's the one i remember playing that and thought oh this is going to be great oh god and i just felt really sick and i thought oh this is not for me the vr is not for me until i think a guy i was speaking to was like just literally spend five minutes in it then have a break then spend 10 minutes in it and just get your I guess they call it VR legs, which I love that expression. Right. And that, now I can be in VR for a lot longer, you know, because of it. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's one of these things that once you've tried it, oh God, it's, 
can't go back ever. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, really cool. Uh, VR is just so amazing. And uh, yeah, just like you said, it's it's nearly impossible now to play a 2D game. It is. Yeah, right? It's like so yeah. tough. I try to play some, but it feels just like, okay, there's a little person behind the screen doing something like, okay, I, I want to be in inside the thing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like what the heck? Okay, cool. So you CV CV one, and then afterwards you got the reverb G G one directly, or um... yeah. Well, I I got the G one, and then within about two days it uh, it broke. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, yeah. The the G one had... launch was terrible too. Yeah, I had the flashy uh, display thing going yeah, on. Yeah, I, was like, I know. Oh no, can't believe it. So I got rid of it, um, and then I got a Rift S and absolutely loved it. I yeah. love the Rift S. I've still got it now. Actually. It's still pretty amazing, actually. I yeah, I still adore that headset. It's like I don't know. Um, I just I don't know. I don't know if I could be here without it, to be honest. Even though I know there's better headsets out there, it's just that secondary headset that I like to use from time to time. But I did end up buying a G1 again when they I think they call it the version two Reverb G1, where they sorted out the uh, the flashing and the uh, persistency of the panel. But they also that was tied in. I don't want to get too technical, but with the Windows update that increase the clarity of the window sorry of the of the reverb so when i tried it for the second time i've got a video on the channel of that i was like oh hang on a minute not only is this more the clarity is better but it actually feels just so much you know, the display and everything felt so much better and and that, and that was it really i think the g1 at that point was my main headset because it is for, for flight simulation really it's all about that clarity i think that's the most important right, right. aspect for for that sort of thing you know so yeah cool that was, uh, Perfect, yeah. Super nice to have you here on the show, Steve. Oh, honestly, it's great oh, to be this, here. <laughs> this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Fantastic. Great. And now, let's. why don't we go to the next one from the UK? <laughs> Gary. Gary, so good. So good to see you again. So, Gary, um, yeah, tell us a bit more about um, your VR background and when, when did you get into VR? How was it? Um, yeah, so Anthony's heard all, all of this about a million times, I think. Uh, we've, <laughs> we've heard each of these stories a million times. But um, yeah, so when I first, well, I first tried VR when I was about 11 years old, the old virtuality machines, um, oh. which was it, was, it was actually a flying game, Steve, believe it oh, or not. Brilliant. Um, brilliant. I can't remember a lot about it other than these weird shaped triangles that were flying over <laughs> my head at, at low resolution and low frame rate. Um, but yeah, so I tried it then. It was about five pounds for about five minutes back in 91, I think it was when I tried it. Um, but then, so since then, that sort of put the seed in my head. And since then, I've sort of half followed it through. I, I didn't really follow it that much through the 90s. But you see the in the 90s magazines where you had the Cybermax and things like that, these, these other 90s-based VR headsets. Um, but I never really got into it then. And then once the Oculus Kickstarter kicked off, um, I got a lot of interest. I, I, I wanted to get into that, but I didn't want to jump in when it was like a DK1 or a DK2 kind of thing. So I decided to wait and... In between that time, of course, we heard a lot about the HTC Vive. So I just thought, whichever one comes out first, that's the one I'm going to get. Um, so I put a pre-order in for the CV1. Um, it turns out that the HTC Vive was the one that I got first. So I cancelled the uh, CV1 because that was, uh, you know, to the one of the questions you've got in your uh, in your description Um Sebastian about uh, the worst launch the the <laughs> CV1 did have one of the one of the bad launches because it didn't get headsets out to a lot of people when they wanted it so I cancelled the pre-order um, and stuck with the HTC Vive for quite a while honestly um, and I was really really pleased with it since then I've had uh, so many headsets I've had so many I've sold so many uh, PSVR the Valve Index um, I've briefly tried the Samsung Odyssey uh, the Oculus Go the Oculus Quest the Oculus Quest 2 um, a lot of these I don't have anymore I've got the Index and now the Oculus Quest 2 um, and that probably brings us pretty much up to date with um, my VR history but yeah I've been into it right from the beginning i followed it from around the oculus kickstarter but i didn't really you know dive into buying hardware until the launch of consumer vr in 2016. all right cool very nice and well gary you are not just into playing vr you're also into thinking into the future of virtual reality and yes i did read your book 
And it's called the Memory Engine, and you can check it out in the description below. You can go to Gary's website and find out all about his book because you are an author, like a, like a hobby author. It's not your main job, right? But no, no, it's not my main job. Yeah, it's it's a hobby that I do. Um, so yeah, you can get it on Amazon. The audio version, the audio book version, is available on Audible as well now as well. So yeah, that's all out there for people to check out. So please do it. I read it. And I really, really enjoyed it a lot. And I think like so many things that you talk about in the book, they are actually really relevant in today's in today's um, present, right? Like things, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's about like a big company who kind of owns the virtual reality right now. A bit, yeah. right? It's a bit. So, yeah. I yeah, think... you can see where I got the inspiration from. It didn't take a genius to get that kind of inspiration, to be honest. <laughs> right, right. Very cool. I really loved it. So, please, everyone, if you are into reading a book or if you are re into into listening to a book, then please check out The Memory Engine. It's made by one of ours, by Gary Walkden. And, Gary, it's amazing. It's freaking amazing to have you here as a resident guest on the Next Dimension podcast. Cool. Very cool. Now we're going to Tony. Tony. Tony is doing the VR365 podcast. No, not podcast. No, no, no. Not, not at all. It's a YouTube channel. <laughs> and Tony, tell us a bit more about how you got into virtual reality. Yeah. So the quick rundown is basically... So like in the 90s and stuff, I was like a real hardcore video game nut job, right? <laughs> and I would have Super Nintendo, Genesis, Sega CD, Saturn, Jaguar, 3DO, all of them. I was just like video games were my life, you know? And, and I would like get these magazines and because that's how you got the new information back then. Like, so you'd want to get these magazines instantly. And when the systems would come out, I get them. And there's this thing I call the super Mario 64 effect, which is like when you first went into a Toys R Us and they had a kiosk with super Mario 64 and you saw little Mario and there was beautiful, colorful trees. And it was like, Oh my God, this is a whole new world. And so for me, throughout the 90s and even into the early 2000s, like every time you'd get a new video game system, it would be like these incredible new possibilities. And that was my drug. That, that was the thing that I was always chasing. And what I noticed is, so we got to like the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 um, and GameCube, I, or wait, was it the Wii? The Wii, I think. And once we got there, I felt like from that point forward, we were not getting the Super Mario 64 effect. Like it was just the same games, but they would be shinier. You know, everybody would look like they were covered in sweat or whatever. And, and they would just go with this <laughs> higher resolution. And so like all the consoles that kind of came out in, in the last 10, 15 years or whatever, I just feel like there's nothing like taking me to a new like like a, a new thing, you know, where and, and VR is that. And so I actually left modern gaming and I was playing Mar, you know, I was playing old Genesis games and stuff like that. And then what happened was it was 2015. It was the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona and HTC and Steam kind of shocked the world with the whole lighthouse thing. Right. And the lighthouse thing room scale the idea of room scale that really captured my attention because i imagined oh okay i get it you're basically making like this cube where a fantasy is going to happen with inside this cube and you can walk around inside the cube and there's like a fantasy going you know it's basically the holodeck it's obviously the most ghetto holodeck there is i mean we're <laughs> at the very beginning of it right it's atari 2600 it's pong we're at the very, very beginning, but that was the exciting thing. And like, and my very first experience with VR, cause I hadn't tried anything. Steve was talking about how he tried a crappy phone VR thing. I had tried no VR at all. I bought the HTC Vive just on a whim, like rolling the dice and hoping it would be awesome. And I got my HTC Vive, hooked everything up, the very first thing I experienced was like the Steam VR setup, you know, where you're like in this white room and it's like, zzz, 
you know, these tables are like rolling over and the little guys are running around. And I had like the volume super loud when I was doing this. And I was just like, oh my God, you know, I'm looking around at everything. And I just knew from that point on, it, it, it boggles my mind that people try VR and their entire world isn't changed. Because when I tried it, I'm like, it's over. It's over, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. It. I'm looking that's around. It. I'm like, it is great. over. It is over. Yeah. Wow. And so that's kind of my uh, VR story. But you know what's weird, though, is we're like four years later or five years later now. And if I was being super honest, I, I would think that VR would have been a lot further along than we actually are. Okay. Um, but I still retain that passion for, you know, just this is a new world that we're entering. Wow. Very cool, yeah. So, um, Tony, tell us also a bit more about when you started with your VR channel. When did you start with going live and, yeah, telling the people about your love for VR? Yeah, well, actually, I had a podcast called um, Vivecast, and Gary uh, was a special guest on episode 10 of the Vivecast. This was just audio only, no video, no nothing. And uh, me and Gary had fun on that episode, and I was telling Gary, I was like, Cause I was spending ridiculous amounts of time editing the audio. I don't know why I was like obsessed with getting out like loud breaths and stuff. I was like editing everything. And so I was spending way too much time. I'm, I'm like, Gary, if we did a live show, there's no editing. It's live. You, you can't edit something that's live. And so we started VR Roundtable, and then Steve came aboard and Chris came aboard. How did you and get then a to know bit... them? How did you know? How did you get to know um, like Gary? Like why? How did that happen? I think Gary Gary hit me up on Reddit. Uh, I think I might have mentioned something about the Vivecast, and I think Gary messaged me on Reddit and oh, I, said I something you. about... Or, yeah, I said uh, if you wanted to start a two-man podcast um, okay. to like do a discussion, just an audio one. Again, just an audio. That's all I wanted to do at that time. Um, but you pushed me off. You said, no, no, not interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so and then we did VR Roundtable, and then VR. I had a I had a VR Game Rankings YouTube channel for a quick minute there, which I was trying to promote a website that I have. It's called VR Game Rankings, and it's you know it's a it's a um, amateur website basically. But um, the idea behind that website is trying to celebrate all the great VR games that we have currently, and then trying to hype up the best upcoming VR games. That's the idea. I don't really achieve that 100%, but I do try and we update the rankings eventually. And I work on that. And I started a little YouTube channel to try to promote that and did and really started to enjoy it. And then ended up starting VR 365. And, and VR 365 was like, VR 365, VR yeah. gaming 365 <laughs> days a year. It was supposed to be a daily routine and I would do it every single day. And I was unemployed for a little period of time. So it was real easy to do Perfect. it. Then I got employed back and uh, it was harder to do it every day. So now we don't do it every day. All right. Anyways, it was amazing that you did the VR Roundtable podcast. Actually, I loved it. And I'm kind of happy to be able to bring some of it back here. <laughs> so that's amazing. So also, if the other members of the VR Roundtable podcast would like to join here sometimes, absolutely, you're welcome to do so. Yeah, cool, cool. Great to have you all on the show. And um, yeah, I think I should also say a bit words about myself. Probably most of the viewers know me. My name is Sebastian Ang. I'm here in good old Germany, Dortmund. The city is called. We are all about... Um, adult beverages and football. That's what we do here in Dortmund. Yeah, very down to earth. And for myself, I grew up here and, well, my story is a bit like Tony's. I'm a complete video game nut job. The same thing, exactly the same thing. For me, it started with the Atari 2600. It was my first video game console. And for me, the biggest thing was to go to the store with my mom and tell her or ask her, could I please have the new game? That was out for the Atari 2600. And the game was was looking like only like three big pixels. There was Pelé <laughs> soccer. And then you somehow had to, had to play with it and, and score a goal. But you know what? I loved it. <laughs> I really loved it. And at that time, it was cool. And just like Tony, I just, I just went through the whole evolution, right? 
um, Atari 2600, then the Sega Master System, the Nintendo Entertainment System, then the Super Nintendo, which like blew my mind. It was amazing. It was incredible what was going on. Like Super Mario World, like I, I can't believe how good that was, right? Then Nintendo 64. Then, yeah, it, it just got better and better, and I really enjoyed it, but it, exactly the same feeling like Tony. At one point, <laughs> yeah, it didn't get better anymore. It was just like, okay, the same games, always the same stuff. We're always playing like FIFA, and yes, it does get a little bit better in graphics, but this is, the game stays the same. And then in the 90s, in the late 90s, there was some kind of virtual reality going on. Yeah, just like, like Gary said before, there was something going on. And there were some movies about virtual reality. And I just thought, like, what the heck? This is amazing. I want this. So somehow this kind of, like, excitement for the technology was in me. And I was just thinking, like, wow, if this, at one point in time, if I can afford it and if it's real, this is going to be unbelievable. So in the 90s, actually, I totally I totally uh, didn't try it at all. I was more busy, like, um, like partying and stuff. Yeah, and I, I didn't have <laughs> the money or whatever to get into these kind of experiences. And, yeah, but then when the second wave of VR hit us, right, when the first... Uh, VR um, Kickstarter was up with the Oculus Rift, the original Oculus Rift. Rift, wow. I was super excited. I was thinking, okay, now it's the time. And um, yeah, I, actually, I wasn't in it. I was not in it for the DK1. I was in it for the DK2. And I pre ordered the thing. And wow, I got it. And at that time, I was living in Taiwan, actually. I was like, uh, like studying and uh, getting to know my wife at that time, which was fantastic. But also, I got the DK2. <laughs> and it was also pretty amazing. And I put it on and I thought, what the friggin' heck is going on now? This is it. This is everything. And I was like, wow, unbelievable. And actually... I was a bit thinking about quitting my job and going into it like full time. And actually, I'm like, I'm an, I'm an electrical engineer. I was working in Taiwan also as an electrical engineer, like doing hardware things and stuff. But I was thinking at that time, you know what? Probably I should stop being an engineer. Probably I should do something about YouTube or, or start, like, start, start a web magazine. And at that time, only one web magazine was online was Road to VR. And that was like 2014 or 15, the only one. I should have started at that time. I should have done it. <laughs> I should have started a YouTube channel. And actually, I did upload a few videos. I played like um, Half-Life 2 with my DK2. And uh, yeah, it was pretty amazing. I'm going to link the video, my very first video in the description. I was young and I, I was spoke not so <laughs> confident and stuff. But it was the very first video. It was pretty cool. And there's even like a comment from Nati. <laughs> at that time, 2014, like, hey, cool, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, and he was, he did it, and he he kept on going from that point on. But I, I thought like, no, okay, that uh, I'm not going to do it. Uh, I will focus on my engineering career and keep on being an engineer. Yeah, probably that was the wrong decision. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways. So I enjoyed everything and stuff, and yeah, I just kept on being an engineer. But then, I think it was like 2016 or something, Google. Google thought it would be a great idea to go into virtual reality. And they started something called Daydream. <laughs> and I thought, okay, if Google goes into this, this is going to be the biggest thing ever. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to quit my job engineer <laughs> and I'm going to go full time on YouTube wow I'm going to be huge <laughs> and I started a channel called daydream district please say yes if you know daydream district in the chat and um, yeah I was like covering daydream which is like uh, the VR where you put your phone into some kind of a viewer and it was not bad actually Right, it was not bad. It only had like one controller, like one six degree, uh, three degrees of freedom controller, and that's it. You know. So when now I see people bitching about the controller tracking, 
of the of the Windows Mixed Reality headset, I just think to myself, you know, when I started, we only had one <laughs> controller, and it only, was, it only was three degrees of freedom. You little VR snowflakes, <laughs> you know? So it's, it's like so, so funny, like how I started with that thing, right? And I did that channel, and then, well, it was pretty, it was, it was fun, and I got some traction, but then somehow, Somehow, um, Google thought it w would be a great idea to just let it die. <laughs> and then I thought like, fuck, damn, <laughs> I have just like stopped my job and put everything into this channel. What now? And then I thought, okay, now I'm going to start another channel. I'm going to call it MRTV because at that time the mixed reality headsets started, the, the Windows mixed reality headsets started. And then I first started to cover the, the Windows Mixed Reality headsets. I got them all. But then I thought, like, why just cover Windows Mixed Reality? Why not cover everything? And then I bought the CV1. Then I bought all the headsets. And yeah, well, yeah, now you know. That's MRTV. That's what I'm doing now, covering all the VR headsets. Uh, and um, yeah, covering everything. Facebook, Oculus, Pimax, everything, everything that's exciting. And now we started the Next Dimension podcast. Okay, that is my backstory. <laughs> hey, Sebastian. Yeah. You know what's kind of funny is Reddit. Your Reddit name is like Daydream. daydream. Dis yeah, yeah. Oh, right. yeah. But you know what I thought it meant? What? I thought it was Daydream Distributor. <laughs> I thought like <laughs> cool I thought idea. maybe MRTD was like a distributor of, of Daydreams. daydreams. Oh, that's a great idea. Something. Yeah, so I can totally keep the name then. Uh, I'm the distributor of Daydreams. You're right. <laughs> cool, I like it. Like it very much. Yeah, yeah. So now you know my backstory and cool. It seems like we are all very, very much into virtual reality. So amazing to be able to speak with you. And I really hope that, um, yeah, that our audience enjoys us being together. And you know how I want this, how I want this podcast to be like? I want it to be like a couple of friends meeting each other on a Saturday, having an adult beverage or a tea or whatever, and simply talking about the stuff that they love. VR, not being an Oculus fanboy, not being a Windows Mixed Reality fanboy or G2 fanboy, nothing like that. I want this podcast to be about virtual reality, the love of it. Let's see the positive sides of the, the Quest headsets. Let's see the positive sides of the G2 headset. Let's see the positive sides of the Valve Index headsets. And let's simply appreciate all of these headsets because we're all in this together. And let's forget about, oh, I love this headset, so your headset must be shitty, and these kind of things. Would you agree to that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, I can't agree to that. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, right. So. I think that's that's what I want this podcast to be like, and I simply want to meet up with nice people and just celebrate what we are excited about. And I think I can feel that passion from all of you guys. You know that passion about this this kind of uh, yeah this kind of topic. Cool, cool. So now that we know what we're going to do here in this podcast, let's start with today's topics. And why don't we start with? the Rift S. So lots of people bought the Rift S last year. <laughs> yeah, it's not long ago that we bought it. And well, actually I was at the GDC 2019. I met with Tony, that was pre-corona. Everybody was very relaxed and we met each other for the first time uh, like uh, in person. It was amazing, Tony, to meet you there. And yeah, that was when, when Oculus actually revealed the Rift S and yeah, we liked it, right, Tony? Or what did you think at that time of the Rift S? Or did, you, or did you think, no, why don't they give us something better, right? That was your thinking. Or what was your thinking? I was disappointed the resolution wasn't higher. I remember that. I, Because I, I, they had made kind of this big deal behind the scenes. There was like rumors and stuff. And so when they finally revealed it, I was like, oh, I thought the resolution would be higher. But um, no, we mostly liked it. I thought it was incredibly comfortable. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it was incredibly comfortable. But there were lots of people also like like really bitching about it and being super unhappy about it because they wanted like uh yeah, like a higher resolution headset. They wanted more field of view. They wanted the the next gen Rift, right? They they really wanted the Rift CV1. They Not, still do. They they <laughs> still do. They still yeah. do. Right, they still do. But I think that perception changed a bit when people really had it in, in their hands. And I think people enjoyed the Rift S, right? 
I think so, yeah. And the, um, I mean, a lot of the Rift S as well, because they priced it, uh, I mean, it was a little bit difficult because they priced it the same price as the original Quest, which came out around the same time. And a lot of people were saying, you know, the Quest has got a lot more built into it than the Rift S and this kind of stuff. But I picked up a, a Rift S on launch and I was really impressed with the display. I thought the display looked great. Field of view didn't bother me. I did feel like it was slightly less than the original CV1. Um, but then, you know, you've got, it had better, well, better comfort in some ways because I was a big fan of the CV1 head strap as well, in all honesty. Um, but overall, they the, the big thing around that time was the fact that they got rid of the IPD adjustment, which for people like Anthony is not a great thing. And it also coincided with Valve announcing the index is that right around that time uh around that uh, f8 i believe right. because they made a big thing about the ipd adjustment on the index um but but when people got the rift s and i i got it and i thought it was a really really good headset honestly um the reason i sold it is because it well mainly because i got the index and the index just just blew me away the the actual headset of the index blew me away not so much the controllers um and if i could combine something like the headset of the index with the oculus touch controllers that would be a dream come true um but overall i think people really did like the rift s but oculus and facebook just didn't want to continue with down that path and we could see sort of where it was going uh for you know the past 12 months or more really Right. I, Gary, I think the uh, sorry, can I, I was just going to say that yeah. last year VR headsets just exploded, didn't they? And it was just a crazy year. It was a very exciting year. I think the Rift S come out as the, the better all rounder. You know, it, just, it was it wasn't amazing at one thing, but it was just the best overall sort yeah. of value for money PC based VR headset, I think. Yeah, and value it's still is value. A big deal. Exactly. Super yeah. value for money. And you didn't need the super. Um, the super um, beefed out PC system to use it, right? And basically, it's it's a headset that everybody enjoyed, but the people who have a big IPD like Tony, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was that was the big thing, right? That was the only thing. But also in terms of how it looked, actually pretty nice the Rift S, and it did look better than the Quest One if you hooked up the Quest One to your computer using Link, right? Yeah, the other thing too is like when you think about a a dedicated PC VR headset, like you could have a Quest 2 and you can have a link cable, but I just feel like like you feel like you're going to break something, you know, because you feel like that cable is going, you know, and and I I kind of think when you have a real PC headset and you have a nice cord that's really connected that there's something a little bit better about that. There, there is. Right. And also the other thing, I mean, I will say that I I People that want to get a Quest 2 and use it as their PC headset as well, it's a great option. It's a great solution to do that. I, I think it's a, a nice idea and a nice option to have. I will say that you can tell the difference between it uh, going from a uh, Quest, which is using compressed video going over that cable to get it to the, the Quest 2, and then just using a raw feed, a HDMI feed to a headset. I think anybody could tell the difference. Whether that bothers you enough or not is another matter, of course. And uh, again, I'll just reiterate, I think that the option for a lot of people to just purchase Quest 2 and then just have that option to, to use it as a PC VR, VR headset is overall fantastic. It is. And now with the 23 update, it got so much better. So before, I was not a big fan of the link um, cable or of, of the, the link mode because I simply saw too much of that compression going on, right? But with the V23 now, it's so nice. It is basically like really you, you, you nearly have that PC VR headset there right now if you connect it with Link, right? You can set up um, the resolution to be super high. You can you can you can put the throughput to 500 megabit per second. So it's it's basically it is now a PC VR headset, right? It looks much better than before, doesn't it? It's it's closer. Yeah, I still think there is a distinct okay. difference. Yeah. I, I mean, maybe not in every single game, but right. I think I mean I, I tried No Man's Sky and I tried Fallout 4 VR, and there was a, a pretty not. <laughs> Not enough to really warrant paying the extra to get a dedicated PC VR headset, but there was definitely a difference there, yeah. Okay. The, it's, uh, it's close enough. What's the battery life like on it? Because that, that's a big deal for me. As, you know, the, it's controllers, a the controllers. Sorry, sorry the, the battery life of the Quest 2. Um, ah, okay. You know, if you're, say, in a sim 
uh, you know, two, two hours, hours or something. Yeah, two yeah. hours. That's just not long enough for me, personally. Yeah, right. But, it, but you know, it's a shame. But if you but could, if, you, if you connect it to your computer, then it will it will be um, sure. alive longer. Power. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. I think you can you can spend like long hours with it when you connected it to your computer. Yeah, if you get the actual um, the official Quest Link cable, doesn't it charge during use as yes. well? Yes, like, right. To the point where it won't actually run down. Um, right. cool. Not all cables do that, but I think that one does. Yeah. It, it, but it's quite pricey. <laughs> yeah, let's be yeah, honest about yeah, that. I, and here in Germany, it's like 99 euros. And I think in, also the same like in the UK, like something like this, or 79, 89 pounds. Oh, wow. Yeah, 89 pounds. Yeah, wow. Yeah, wow. That is expensive. I think it's the yeah. cheapest in the US. I think you pay like $79 for the link cable. Yeah, something like this. Tony, do you have a Quest 1 or 2? I have both Quest okay. 1 and 2, yeah. And how, how's it going for you with the Quest 2? I like, well, see, the IPD thing is a little bit of an issue, though, because, you know, you have the three options. And so I go to the 68 IPD. And what, what happens is one eye is really good, and then the other eye is a little bit blurry. But okay. but I can, after a couple of minutes, it's like no big deal. And um, I'm enjoying it. I have, um, on my Quest 2, I have a Franken mod. I put the Franken mod on it. I got the new clips for it. And I had the Franken mod on my Quest 1 and then moved it to the Quest 2. And Comfort, the Franken mod combined with the Quest 2, because the Quest 2 is lighter. And just that combination, there's like no weight on your head in terms of like it pulling down on you or anything like that. So it's very nice and stable and it just, it's not weighing down, on, not weighing down on you. It's a lot more comfortable and I'm really enjoying it, but I'm not really using it as a PC VR. I use it for the quest. There's a lot of people that will say, you know, they, they want the really high end graphics and stuff. But for me, like I, I see my quest two over there and, and I, I just grab it. I turn it on and bam, I'm in a game. And I mean, I know I sound like a complainer and kind of a whiner and stuff, but there's a lot of times when I, when I grab a PC VR headset and I'm in it and then it's like, Oh, now the sound isn't working. And now I got to go over to my computer and I got to do control alt delete so I can get back <laughs> into my computer so I can change the sound. And, and, Little minor things like that, but I kind of like the frictionless experience of just grabbing a quest, popping it on, and boom, I'm in a game, you know, so. Right, right. That makes lots of sense. Yeah, so lots of us got the, the Rift S, really enjoyed it. Still think it's an amazing headset. I have IPD64, so I don't have a problem at all with, with the IPD. And yeah, I really enjoyed the headset a lot. But then, like, lots of us were, like, really, like, bummed how Facebook simply made the decision to let it die. <laughs> yeah, like, like, one year after it came out, it's like, it's dead. It's dead in the water after they showed, uh, not only, first of all, people were, like, bummed after the link cable was announced. I was about to say that, right? yeah, like, that like, kind like, of the wow. beginning of the end. <laughs> like, like, wow, the Quest people get everything, right? They get the link mode, they get the, the hand tracking, and people were thinking, like, what the heck is going on here with my beloved Rift S? The Quest is getting better and better, and the Rift S is just staying there, and nothing is happening, right? And people were thinking, okay... Something is something is bad about this whole thing, right? It seems like they don't um, take care of the Rift S anymore. But then the Quest 2 was announced, and then it was official that the Rift S was dead. And I think it's it's kind of noteworthy that Facebook would simply like be so um, be like this and would simply kill off a main character <laughs> like of their story <laughs> like like so easily and and like like so suddenly what do you think about that decision to, to just to kill it off so fast well you got to wonder about that decision from the standpoint of what does this really mean going forward like are they trying to say that oh you can just get a quest 2 and you can use the link cable and that's good enough and we're still going to have plenty of PC VR games going long into the future. Or does this mean that they're kind of backing away from PC VR? In fact, you know, there's kind of a, a thing that's going on behind the scenes where I think a lot of people are wondering if the Oculus Rift store is long for this world. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like in 2023, 
are we going to be able to go on to the Oculus Rift store and be able to buy a brand new Oculus Rift game? Or is that something that that uh, disappeared into the mist like a year earlier because the Rift store has basically been shut down? That's why Medal of Honor is on Steam right now. Maybe Lone Echo 2 is also going to be on Steam. It, is something going on here or am I reading like a lot of information into something that's not really happening? I think you're uh, right. I think it's going to happen. I think the Rift Store is going to be dead soon. In my opinion, it's going to merge together with the Quest Store at one point in time. And, I mean, on the long run, what I believe is going to happen on the long run is going to be that actually we're going to get our games through the cloud. <laughs> For all people who know me and who know MRTV, you know, and I'm a big fan of this whole cloud thing, and I'm sure, I'm sure it's going to happen. I'm sure it's going to happen, and I think that the Quest 2 is some kind of like a like a middle like a like a hardware that is some kind of middle thing now and the next the quest 3 or the quest 4 probably even probably the quest 3 is going to be a headset where we're going to get our content delivered through 5G network or through our wireless network and the games are going to be rendered in the cloud so at that point in time we're going to have just one we're just going to have like like one um, store the Oculus store and then also, we don't have these restrictions anymore, as in, okay, the games can only be like these mobile games who can run on X2 because the games will be somehow rendered in the cloud. And we don't have to think about the, the hardware anymore. We don't have to care about the XR2 chipset. We don't have to care about our local 2080 Ti. That is basically what's happening right now with Stadia, right, with Google Stadia. We don't need that 2080 Ti, but still we can enjoy Cyberpunk 2070 with the best graphics. So I believe this is like something that's also going to happen with VR and probably the Quest 3, we're going to stream our stuff from the cloud. Would you agree with this or do you think I'm way too futuristic here? <laughs> it's, it's quite, unfortunately for me, I think you're right, but I, I loathe that day when that happens <laughs> Why? personally. Because, well, because for me, VR is all about pushing the boundaries of what you can achieve. But, you know, as me being a PC gamer, I love buying a computer every sort of three years or so and, and upgrading my parts. And sometimes when I play a VR game and I can't quite reach that ultra setting, it's, you know, it's just knowing that the, the, the developer, the game developer is able to push, you know, their what they see, their vision with a game right to the top of the, what they can achieve. And I just think if things are going to be... Um, sort of diluted a bit like that i just i don't know and uh, you know yeah I, th I, th I think it it will happen as well i think you're being yeah. a bit optimistic uh sebastian <laughs> if you think it's quest 3 the rate they're pushing them out honestly um but i think yeah further down the line it will happen the thing is with 5g because the, the latency is always going to be a problem and until they've got the infrastructure around the 5g the the cloud edge computing right. which needs to be relatively close to where you are going to be streaming to, um, you know, actual physical location um, in order to get that, then it's still, um, it's still a long way off. And eventually I'm sure we will get that, but, and I don't necessarily see that as diluting the experience down um, once we get to that, mainly because they will have these huge, server farms which will be ultra you know they'll have the, the the best cards or you'll pay for them to to stream from the best cards and you'll still get a really really high quality experience however i will say steve i agree i like having a physical pc that yeah. i can upgrade and do myself as well it's i do like that about aspect. that yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah and just even you know not everyone's going to have an amazing broadband connection and sometimes internet goes wrong you know and i just like you know yeah. i like the idea of having everything the game everything on in my computer i can play whenever i want to yeah. have complete control over that i don't feel i have control there's this middleman in the middle this cloud and they'll, thing. They'll, they'll take the game away when it's yeah. on a whim as well <laughs> or, or you could you could you know the servers could be down there's all sorts of issues that could happen and then you you know they're in control of your experience i just i don't like it I totally but get I'm it. I'm going to be the minority. <laughs> I totally get it. But you know what? When I was when I was still at uh, university and I was living together with my friends, you know what we had? We had like a whole living room full of cabinets full of DVDs with lots of different videos, right? Like like it was it was amazing, and we were like so proud of our collection, and we couldn't believe that at one point in time this is all going to be gone because we're going to stream 
our videos. So actually, one of my friends, he thought like, oh damn, I have all these DVDs, but very soon, probably they're all going to be, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything to have so many, so many videos, so many DVDs, right, to watch the videos. And well, you know, now it's tough to imagine to have this kind of a room with all these DVDs or Laserdisc or whatever, how old you are, <laughs> and to choose your game from that physical copy. And, you know, I'm so sure all of us four are going to play our games streaming to the VR headset. And, you know, I really don't, be, I don't think it's going to be 20 years. I really think it's going to be... It's going to be 10, though. It's going to be at least 10. And, and so no, that's why... I don't think that's so. That's why I think you're... <laughs> well, your, your theory that they're, like, combining the stores, the Oculus stores, and it's going to be streaming, that's a great theory if it was going to happen in about three or four years, but I think it's, like, 10 years away. I think it's going to be five years away. Tony, we should we should set up a bet, and then the one who the one who loses has to do something funny. <laughs> you know, one thing though about the streaming that a lot of people don't think about is one thing that we have not seen yet in VR is a video revolution. Okay. We have games, but where's the video? It's like when we when we went from standard definition to high definition in the world of TVs, it was like, yeah, if you had a Dreamcast, there was a couple of Dreamcast games that would play at 720p, and you were like, oh, my God, this is incredible. But you also had high definition content where you saw like a little grasshopper and it was so detailed on a leaf and you would watch these like nature shows just because it was high def, right? We haven't had that moment in VR yet because we haven't we don't have like the volumetric video and stuff that we really need to push this to the masses and the streaming is how that's going to be delivered because you're not going to download 500 gigs to watch a, a three minute light filled movie but with streaming it can happen and so I am excited about that aspect of it but again I think I think that's one of the reasons why we haven't seen like a major push with like volumetric video, like we hear people talking about volumetric video and doing tests and stuff, but we have no idea when it's coming. And I think they're waiting because they know no one's going to download um, so many gigs, you know? Yeah, right. But 5G is really there. I mean, I, I can get a 5G contract here in Germany right now and in the UK and US right now as well, right? But we don't, we don't do that right now. But I think in like, probably two or three years, we're going to have that 5G contract. And that's why I think in five years, the streaming VR reality is going to happen. And Tony, we will see. We'll find out. 2025. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to talk about this in, in the podcast in five years. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah, cool. But, we, but now we have drifted a bit away from the topic. And the topic is the Rift S is now on sale. And you can get it for $300. So, do you guys think this is a good deal and who should buy it and who should not buy it? Can, can I just quickly say, sure. um, when, I, when I first heard about the Rift S, I was so disappointed. <laughs> you know, I wanted that Rift too. Um, but, and the specs on, you know, when you look at it, it's, it's like, oh my God, you know, the, the resolution is basically the same. There's no audio proper. It's like piped down it, and it just, it, you know, it wasn't a proper audio solution. Even the controllers were just cheaper, you know, and I, was, I thought, oh, my God, this is really bad. But then I realized it's an LCD display, which I know in itself actually isn't the best because we, we want an OLED panel. We know that's what we all want. But um, but actually, it's one of those headsets that's greater than some of its parts, if it makes sense. You know, um, when you actually use it, like you say, it's actually really comfortable. And the visual clarity out of it is actually really good. It's got a really great sweet spot. I think the Rift S. It does, um, have, absolutely. It, yeah, and actually, even compared to the G2, because uh, I was really, I'm still really quite shocked by sort of the. It's not edge to edge clarity, but it's pretty decent, and um, I still think it's relevant, shall I say, for some particular niche users, particularly for the flight sim crowd. I've got to say, I think the Rift S. It's still a great headset if you've got a medium range computer. You know, um, that, yeah, not everyone has. I mean, my, my graphics cards are 1080 Ti, uh, so it's, it's actually quite an old card now. But, um, you know, the Rift S can run it all day long, no problem. And I, I think it's still great value for money, although right. you obviously have to have a Facebook account, which we won't go into maybe. But uh. <laughs> Yeah, do you, when do you have to have one, though? Because I, I know with the Quest 2, you got to have one, like, immediately, right? It's no. um, two, two years, isn't it, if you actually own it? But only, only if you have an Oculus account. 
if you have yeah, not had an did, Oculus yeah. account yet, now you cannot make one anymore. So right now, if you don't have an Oculus account, you will have to log in with Facebook. Can you can you connect? So supposing, say, I mean, I don't think it's like within the next year or two, but supposing one day they do, Oculus do remove the PC Oculus store, can you connect a Rift S just directly to Steam? If you connect it, will Steam recognize it without the Oculus software, or do you need the Oculus software? No, you, I think you need the Oculus software I running think in the background. Yeah, I think software, you're right, yeah. 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 I was just if, thinking, yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I, when, when Oculus does this, I don't think they're going to make it where like it's just a dead product. I, I just think no, I, like there will be no new games on the store. There will be no new firmware updates. There will be no support, but it'll still be there with whatever the last firmware was. And and maybe like you won't be able to play any online games, but like you'll be able to play offline stuff, no problem. You can still play like, online games with Steam VR though. I think right. it's pretty easy to, to recommend it as, as a headset because you're still going to have many years of use out of it and it is still a great headset um however i'd i'd probably say hold off a little bit because i can see it going down again uh, before they completely cancel it whether you can get hold of one at that point or not is probably another thing though but right right i also think at 300 dollars, it's great value for a great headset and just like steve said before if you have like a mid-range pc if you don't have that 2080 ti oh that's even already <laughs> already old right <laughs> you should have like a 3080 now a 3090 then the rift s is amazing you're going to have lots of fun i really enjoy it you have great tracking right you just connect it to your computer and you have you're going to have a great time and the picture quality is really nice right even compared to quest with link or even quest 2 with link okay i think quest 2 with link is pretty amazing now with v23 but i think really if you have a mid-range pc the rift s is still going to serve you well and you're still going to be amazed right by how amazing virtual reality is tony would you also say like 300 dollars is a good is a good deal now for the rift s yeah because really what you're thinking about is do i buy a rift s or do I buy a Quest 2? And why would you buy a Rift S over a Quest 2? Well, maybe you are you like your games more high-end. You've got a good graphics card. You're a PC VR guy. You play Half-Life Alex. You're playing Boneworks. You don't really want to play these watered-down games on the Quest. There are some people that are like that. I'm, I'm okay with the watered-down stuff for the ease of use and all that. But, but some people, that annoys them. And, and they, want the, they want the high-end stuff. And if you get... A Rift S, the advantage over the Quest 2, it's way more comfortable right out of the box. I mean, I know they did improve the comfort of the Quest 2 with it a, a little bit lighter, but you've got, I had to spend like a hundred bucks extra or whatever to get the deluxe audio strap. With the Rift S, you can buy it as is, take it out of the box, and it's going to be comfortable on your head right from day one. There's no compression losses. I'm still a little bit concerned about the Facebook thing because I know they made an announcement something about if you buy new hardware so what I'm curious about let's say you have an Oculus account already like I have an Oculus account already but if I order a Quest 2 and it I mean um, if I order a Rift S and I get it and it's a brand new device and now I'm hooking it up to my PC is it going to say no you've got to have a Facebook account I'm not sure about yes. that yeah, you unfortunately, yes. it, unfortunately you are ooh. being forced yeah, yeah that's <laughs> definitely uh, let down yeah, and that's yeah, just it, isn't so. it? That's that's the big deal here, really. For for me, for new Oculus users, if you're PC based VR user only, uh, I just feel that you know it's either Rift S or it's Index, really, isn't it? Or obviously the G2. Uh, right. I just, um, and for me personally, I mean, I've got a Facebook account, but just the idea of selling my day it's actually you know they're getting a great deal off, out of you, really. If you want, you know, to be honest, because you know with a Quest Two. What is it? Two hundred pounds? Is it? I can't remember. I don't know how much it is. Is it three hundred? Three hundred pounds. Three hundred. Sorry, three hundred yeah, pounds. Yeah. So I mean, I don't own a Quest Two. And it's funny actually because there's about three or four people that I know who love VR, and if if they came to me and said, "What headset would you recommend?" I would say Quest Two. Of course. Even yeah. though that's not my yeah. personal preference, because it is. I get what Anthony's saying. You literally put it on your head. You're straight in the game. Most people want that. You don't want to be fiddling around with settings messing around with graphics cards and got you know it's a pain in the ass it really is so I, I think i'm in the minority really but i think if you are strictly pc based 
uh, you know, and, and your, your graphics whore, as I call it. I'm a, I'm a graphic. I love my graphics. I love to be in the mirror as much as possible. It's got to be. That's part of what they've done, isn't it, Facebook? They've made it so easy to recommend as well. That's why yeah, it's going yeah. to be a successful headset. Of course. Um, and yeah. It's, and it's great. I must actually really admit it's great. I, lo I love the Quest 2, right? It's like yeah, you simply put it on. You have beautiful graphics. If you want, I'd you love can... to try one, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you should yeah, do it. And you, if you want, you can connect it to your PC. If you even want, you can get a wireless with virtual desktop. It's an amazing headset. It's a really, really amazing headset. And I love the hardware. And I think they've done an amazing job here. The whole, the whole thing is genius, right? It's so cheap. The basic thing, right? So everybody's going to go crazy about it. And they're going crazy about it. Only $299, right? But then <laughs> you're going to buy that probably you're going to buy the 256 gigabyte version. You're going to buy the original link cable. You're going to buy the elite strap if you can find one. And then it's not so cheap anymore, right? Exactly. So I think Facebook yeah. has done such an amazing job. <laughs> and at the end, then you are at that probably, I don't know, $500 headset. And then you're even going to give them your privacy, your, your data. So I just think it's genius. It's a genius mm. master plan. <laughs> and the guys at Facebook are really geniuses. And it's, it's, we all yeah. fell for it. It's crazy. It's a genius uh, master plan. And you it's say like they've created, they've created this headset, which is so easy to recommend. It's so cheap. Um, and, you know, if you're a cynic, you could say at what cost? And I am a cynic. And we see all of these news stories coming out at the right. moment about Facebook and how they are being, uh, you know, th there's all of this stuff that's kicking off in America and in Germany as well, um, where they are saying, you know, they're anti-competitive. And we've heard this from some of the Facebook developers, Darshan, Guy Godin, and, and this kind right. of stuff. I know we've, th that's another the topic we've not got down for the show so not for, I not for tonight that. but no. <laughs> we de we're definitely also going to have Guy Godin on the show I've already asked him if he would like to join and yeah uh, we're going to talk about this other stuff as well here on the podcast the next dimension podcast and it's going to be very exciting so that's the thing you know I'm so sad that whenever somebody asks me what what headset to to go for I would say <laughs> quest 2 but I always have to say but I always, oh, yeah. There's always this but, <laughs> and I, I, I simply cannot like um, not tell them about the but thing. And here yeah. in Germany, we are a bit anal about the privacy thing, about the data thing. I mean, like really. So you should be. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. everyone should be. Yeah, everyone you know? should be, but not everyone is. But here in Germany, <laughs> really, it really is like uh, it's somehow in our DNA. Probably it has to do because because we had to go through two dictatorships here in Germany, right? And then it's like our privacy was the last thing that we probably had. And that, and that was taken from us too, right? By the whole spy thing and Gestapo and all these bad things. So probably that's why we are a bit more like careful about our privacy. And probably that's why we have more like, uh, yeah, like the bad feelings about what's going on now. And that's probably why we have the, I don't know how it's really called in English language. It's the anti-cartel thing or um, that's funny that that's what it's named <laughs> yeah that's how it's called in germany and now like like two days ago they said okay now we're going to investigate facebook for the vr thing now that's happening that you have to use your facebook account and that's new that's something that happened two days ago and here in germany actually facebook stopped to sell all oculus headsets you cannot buy the rift s you cannot buy the quest one you cannot buy the quest two nothing nothing and now the anti-cartel bureau, <laughs> they are also now, they are, they are starting now with another investigation because of that forced Facebook login. And who knows, if this goes south this for, fa huge for win, Facebook, it, this would be like, this might go overhaul Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no problem for you guys in the UK, though. <laughs> yeah, not yet. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so, so that's, that's pretty interesting what's going on. But that's another story. And probably we're going to talk about this in another show. Anyways, so, um, yeah, the Rift S, it is easily recommendable for everyone who has, like, probably a mid-spec PC, right? I think we would still recommend it, right? For, for me, actually, just but to don't get too technical, but, you know, their asynchronous time warp, their motion projection is the best in the business. It still is. Oh, yeah, it, it really is, is. You can go down to 20 frames per second in games and it'd be really smooth. That's, in VR, that's incredible. And uh, even Windows Mixed Reality have got a new thing coming out, which won't even get any, anywhere close to that, really. Uh, well, ish, but not 
not 20 frames per second. It's crazy. So I think that's a big deal, really. Um, right. The fact that you can be in VR and you don't have to worry about that performance. So yeah, yeah, one thing though, like Medal of Honor, if you buy it on Steam, you it doesn't have Oculus SDK that's support. Good so point. yeah, that's a very good point. Um, supposedly they're going to add that in. Hopefully. Okay. Soon. Okay. Going to talk about this in a moment. Yeah, really interesting stuff with the Rift S and stuff. And also, you mentioned it, um, Steve, the software, the Oculus software is just it's, over the top. It it's amazing. It's, it's really, great, yeah. honestly speaking, it's the best experience in VR that you can have. Also, if you put on the Quest 2, how they put you, how they get you into the game, right? They're really, they, they get rid of all the obstacles. If you buy the G2 <laughs> and get that G2 package, if you're so lucky to get the G2 package, Wow, you are you are um, you, your problems are about to start <laughs> because it's not as easy. Yeah, you don't know really where you are where your games are that you have to get exactly. Steam VR. You don't know these things. You don't know that you have to um, install the Windows Mixed Reality for Steam VR. These things. Yeah. You don't know these things. Really, it's, like, it's like a total pain in the ass, honestly speaking, right? I'm dumbfounded that that's not in the instruction manual. Right. Uh, or even on that little sheet of paper you get, just to say, you know, please go here, download this, because that little bridge of right. communication is going to cause so many people yeah. headaches. Like, why is it Frustration, frustration, yeah. right? Yeah. If they yeah. are, if they have subscribed to MRTV, then no, because <laughs> I made these good videos. <laughs> yeah, but but the, the normal person, they, they're going to have a hard time. And before we get into the G2 topic, I would like to tell everyone who's watching this right now, please join our polls. If you have just joined the show, please check out the polls. We have lots of cool questions down in the description of this video, and you can, you can simply vote for your favorite system, the system that you want to buy, how you like Medal of Honor, all these things. That is something special about this show because we want you to more join this show. When you're watching it live, we want this to become more interesting so please do check out the polls and um, yeah simply simply answer them also i would like to say thank you to hussein x robert sterenchak recycled med wookie and forsec chark mister for all the donations thank you very much for this this is this is very much appreciated somehow i must buy the adult beverages <laughs> so thank you so much and um, yeah so now we're getting to the next topic. And the next topic is the G2. The G2 itself, because, well, it's new here, and this is the first time that we have the show, so we, we should probably go over the G2 again. I own it, and also Steve has it at home. I think um, Gary and Tony, you don't have it, and Tony no. wouldn't even touch it if it was given to him for free. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, we, we, we want to talk about the G2 for a moment and the lounge. So... Um, Steve, you have had quite a lot of time now with the G2. What is your overall thoughts on the headset? Well, you know, for me personally, um, I feel it's a new line in the sand for PC-based VR headsets. You know, we've had this low resolution now for far too long. The joke's over. Come on, guys. It's now time <laughs> to at least have this beautiful 2160 by 2160 resolution. I think it's a it's a great resolution to have as a benchmark most pcs actually surprisingly can handle that resolution even if you have to downscale a little bit it's just a fantastic display it really is and you've got to just experience it to to, to really you know to, to, to really see for yourself you know pardon the pun how great it is um i think you know if you compare it to the g1 actually hp have listened really um we won't go into the launch just yet because that is pretty you know that's that sucks yeah completely. we're getting I, I to totally this. agree with that <laughs> but it was just you know the headset itself um they have listened to all of the feedback all the complaints from the g1 and every part of the g1 has been upgraded whether it's the audio whether it's the the lens design even though it's the same resolution i'm, I'm actually pleased they kept with that same resolution because as much as i love what pimax is doing we, you know <laughs> We can't run like 8K displays right now. It's ridiculous. I think um, that 2K per eye is actually a beautiful image. And I've, I've actually been in the headset. I've had a, a six hour session in the Reverb G2. Six hours. Uh, and my, my eyes, I felt great. I felt really, you know, completely fine afterwards. There's no way I'd have been able to have done that with any other headset I've had before. I think that's a big deal. So really... For me, it's a it's a huge upgrade. I think it's a fantastic headset, um, not just for flight simmers and race 
race simmers and all that but for you know for gaming as well i've done quite a bit of, i've actually done more gaming in the g2 this couple of weeks than i have for a very long time uh because i think the upgrades they have done even though it's not quite what we want we all know that the controllers while they're an upgrade they're not quite what we want really they haven't got uh, finger tracking and of course the battery life isn't particularly great it's basically the same as the old windows mixed reality controllers but I think the overall package of it is fantastic. I really do. I love it. Absolutely love it. Great. So so how about the tracking? Like lots of people went out there on YouTube and said like, wow, it's so bad. You cannot play anything with it. Only simulation people will like it. So so how did you feel about that? Oh man, it's just it's just not true. It's just not true. I I think the tracking's fantastic. I mean, you can break the tracking, but I can break the tracking on the Rift S as well. No problem. Um It's all about your lighting, you know, really. I've that's, I've been trying to say this so much, even on my own channel. Like, it's frustrating when I see some of these YouTubers that are having all sorts of problems, but they've got a massive green screen or they've got, like, huge, like, loads of light everywhere. You know, this is, you know, an Al... Oh, I've got one here, look. An LED ring. It needs to see the controller. So just a dimly lit room. I, I Literally, I was in Medal of Honor today for a couple of hours, staring down the sights, putting the controller really close, and I was able to uh, have no, I've no problems at all with the tracking. Um, it's not to say it's perfect. Of course it isn't. I do think the Rift S, if overall's got the better tracking, of course. I think it'd be ridiculous if I, if I said it was the same. No, it's not. But, for sure not, yeah. Yeah, it's not. But I think overall, for general gaming, Uh, I, mean, I don't know about Beat Saber because I don't have Beat Saber, and I know you actually fling your arms no, around like crazy. It also works pretty, pretty well. But I think, I, yeah, I've seen you play that pretty yeah. well. But yeah. for, for shooters, not just for flight sims, but for shooters and things, it's it's really, really fine. I, I don't find any problems with it at all. Yeah. You know? So um, overall, you enjoy it? I think the I think the, the big dead spot for me is, you know, uh, when you say if you've got your controller sort of ab about here, and if you're not looking at the controller, that's when it will start to... Uh, to start, you know, struggle with the tracking. And that's where you really miss that camera on the top with the Rift S. That makes a huge difference. Agreed, agreed. But in terms of throwing grenades, because it has those two on the side now, even if I'm really far back, um, and I, you know, what's it? Is it Rec Room where you can see yourself? And I, I, and, and, mirror, um, yeah. I, was, I was looking at myself, my arm, and I can see that the tracking is perfectly it's adequate. It's not stellar. It's not the best tracking out there by, I mean, no, you know, definitely not. Um, the index still takes those honors without a doubt, but uh, no, it's workable, I, I think, right? Yeah, I think so. I, I really, honestly, I really, honestly think that. I genuinely think the tracking in it is good enough. You know, right. it's not how, amazing. How does it compare, like directly? I don't know, um, Steve, if you've tried it, or Sebastian, I know you probably have tried other Windows mixed reality headsets. How does the tracking compare to that? So something like the Samsung Odyssey, for example, because I know that this one should be slightly better based on the camera positions, um, but I don't know, like, if it actually compares favorably or, or not. Yeah, it's that. it's it's better. Basically, it's it's the same um, in 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 that uh, for the two cameras, but it has the bigger volume because of the two mm. additional cameras. So without a doubt, it's better yeah. than the Samsung Odyssey Plus. And even with the Samsung Odyssey Plus, lots of people had this headset, and it's an amazing headset. I still love the Samsung Odyssey Plus, and the, these guys also played games, right? So now you have even two more cameras. So yes. The tracking volume is better. It is still not good enough. I, I think like like I, I don't quite understand why Windows Mixed Reality why they positioned the cameras as they did, right? Why did why didn't they position the cameras just like on the Quest on the four sides? Because that camera positioning is ob obviously better since you have a better tracking volume on the Quest One and Quest Two. Could Could there be, I mean, I don't know if you can patent that kind of stuff, like camera Perhaps. positions on a headset. Could be, um, could be. But, but, the other, but the other thing is that I will agree with you on, in terms, I think Oculus have put in a ridiculous amount of R&D into their tracking, their oh, insight the system. It's the yeah. best, absolutely. It, and the, the Quest too, it's fantastic tracking. Agreed. It really is compared for inside out tracking. So I suppose part of it going from, if you you were a user of say the Rift S or the Oculus Quest 2, going to that, even if it's a minor downgrade, 
go into that could be a hard pill to swallow for some people. Could perhaps. be, yeah. Right. Could, absolutely, could be depending on on on, on your playing style. Like, um, for example, if you are in a VR game, if you are in a shooter, and your normal playing style is like you are in like this ready down position where your control is down, right? Then you might be hurting, right? Because it's out, it's not in there, right? It yeah. really depends. So I think it depends on from where you come. You will, you will, you will find that the tracking is not good enough for you. It might be. So I cannot say like, wow, it's amazing for everyone. If you're totally used to the amazing tracking of the Quest 2 and the Rift S and you, 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 you're so used to this perfect tracking and then you go to that, it will probably, it will most probably you will find it, right? But if you're, if you're new to VR or if you're coming from, from the Samsung Odyssey or, or uh, the, the, the Cosmos, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that is totally fine. But, but I think even... Even for most of the games, it will be really, really fine. Like I, I streamed Medal of Honor on my channel. You've probably watched it, and I didn't have problems at all. I didn't have problems at all playing Medal of Honor, and I had a great time. So overall, for me, well, I had I had the headset for a long time, as you know, and yeah, I was the first person on the world to have it. But <laughs> but still, even though I I was in this fantastic position, and I know people think, wow, I must be totally like like bought by them or I must I must feel like I have to give back to them because I was the first person in the world to have it. But no, even if I just re had received it, I think it's an amazing headset. And I think it's like such a huge visual upgrade from the Quest 1 or from the Rift S and from the Index that people will be like like totally blown away when they play Alex again, like how it looks in that headset. It is... Like it's, incredible. it's it's so incredible, and it's really like the upgrade that people who who own the Rift CV One had hoped in the Rift Two. I think this headset is really that headset, that Rift Two yeah. that people had hoped for in terms of how it looks. It is really so beautiful, and you know what I really what I really what I really really dislike in our current climate. It's not just VR; it's also politics. It's either black or white. Right? Instead of, instead of saying, okay, the tracking is all right, and it's probably not as good as the, the Quest tracking, right? But then, no, you cannot say like these gray things. You must say, wow, it sucks. It's a nightmare. It's so terrible, right? It's like you're either on one camp or you're on the other camp. And if you're on the one camp, then, wow, this tracking is so terrible. I don't even want to get close to it. And I really don't like this culture. You know, the tracking yeah, is really good enough for most people. Really, for most people, it's going to be good enough. And if you say, wow, the tracking sucks, it's a nightmare, it's glitching all the time, it is not true. And also, if you say, okay, it's not usable for shooters, it is not true. There, Like, really, there are really great of sh um, shades of gray. Shades of gray. And if you... If you care about your lighting environment, if you play it in some kind of candlelight dinner setting, right, for, for the lighting, like, like I have in my background, then you're going to have a great time. Like occlusion, it works just as good as on the Oculus headsets. And yeah, also you can put your, your arms down, down and it's also fine, right? And then when you get back into the, the, the field of view, it's, going, it's directly going to be there again. So really try it for yourself. Don't let like this black and white thing take over you, your your like enjoyment of virtual reality. Check it out for yourself and really don't believe in this black and white stuff. Oh, like it's not usable for, for shooters. It's not true. Check it out for yourself. Check out my streams. It is actually better than most people think it is. So overall, I really, really enjoy that headset for lots of things for the for the for the comfort, for the sound, and yeah, most of all for the visuals. It's just like so much better looking than the Rift S. It is so much better looking than the Index. And I believe the more people will get the headset, the more people look through it and enjoy it, the more people will appreciate it for what it is. It is not the perfect headset. It is not the headset without compromises. So HP was wrong on that when they said like, <laughs> hey, this is the headset without compromises. It has compromises, I think right? every VR headset has a compromise. Every, right every VR headset has compromises. <clears throat> and for this headset, the compromise is it, it doesn't have the perfect tracking. It is just workable, it's good enough. For 90%. most, for ninety, for <laughs> even probably even for 
94 percent or 95 it, <laughs> right it's like it's like really it is it's going 96%. to be 96 percent. yeah it depends you have to check it out for yeah. yourself right the controllers feel good in my opinion i think they they feel just like the oculus ones just like they don't have the capacitive touch right for me it seems okay because i'm not into into um, vr chat so much but for most people it's going to be okay and if it's not okay then get the combination. You can still get the combination and use index controllers together with the headset. So overall, you know what I appreciate for what it is, for bringing in that super high resolution, for bringing in the nice comfort. And really, let's not be like black and white. Let's just appreciate this headset for what it brings to the table. If you don't like it, okay. There's the Quest 2, which is freaking amazing. If you want something more high end in terms of um, tracking, go for, the, go for the Valve Index. But why don't we all just enjoy the headsets for what they bring to the table? And I think this headset brings a lot to the table, and I'm grateful for it. Yeah, totally agree. I think HP are doing something that no other headset, man, well, mainstream. I mean, I'm not going to you know, include Pimax in this, even though you know they are pushing the boundary of VR probably more than anybody, really. Right, but, right, true. Um, for six hundred, was it six hundred pounds for 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 that resolution? Right. For that all that you know index style audio, which I was blown away with that audio. Oh my god, it just sounds absolutely great, and I love how it's off the ear, so that you're you know you're still in that and you know you, you actually can hear the sound like you're wearing like you know proper headphones. For me, it, it's it's as as good as that, but you can't you don't feel like you're wearing them. It's fantastic. It, it's weird. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't actually I don't notice that, but I when i go back to wearing headphones then i notice it it's, yeah. it's like it's so it sounds so <laughs> good and i just notice really that i don't get as hot <laughs> if it's a hot day that, or something that's a very good point hot. that's a, a huge point definitely it's amazing how much heat i guess you lose out of your ears i don't yeah. know how it works but you know <laughs> literally yeah it makes a huge difference and with the tracking as well like the algorithms of it knows where it is half the time unless you're for whatever reason, got your hand like this and you leave it there, you know, right out in front of you, that it might lose tracking then. But if you're just doing a, a motion like this, right. it, will, it will work out where your hand's going to be. The you algorithm, the prediction That's algorithm, the, algorithm. the prediction it's algorithm good, is it? really good. It's really good. And I showed in my yeah, videos, I, even if you if you move like behind your behind your bag and still like do something, it will still track it because the prediction algorithm is really great. So, Tony, I want to ask you, um, what's your your feeling about the G2? Would you ever touch the device? Because <laughs> I can remember last time you told me, yeah, you know, you don't even want to try it out. Yeah, no, no, I, I would love to try it out. If, if there was someone here where I live where I could be like driving over to their house and they've got a G2 and I could just put it on and try it out, I'd love to do that. I, I really would. Or like a Best Buy or some kind of store. You know, another point that we have to make with all these headsets as well is you can't have somebody get a headset and decide, yeah, this headset's great for everybody. Because the reality is, it could be great for 70% of the people. We all have different like cheekbones, eye sockets. Some oh, yes. people's eyes Absolutely, are like way yeah. back. So th there's so many different things. The way your forehead is designed. I remember, remember when we were in San Francisco, um, Sebastian yeah. for, uh, what do you call it? For GDC. what was it? GDC. Yeah, GDC. Yeah. When you're in San Francisco and you're just standing on the street, the humanity that walks by <laughs> yeah, you, man, there unbelievable. are so many different <laughs> no, yeah. types of people, it's different crazy. heads, different bodies. And I was just looking at all these people walking around and I'm thinking, God, it must be murder for these VR headset uh, manufacturers to try to make a one size fits all product when humans are just so different with their head shapes and all this stuff. So that's part of it as well. But the thing about the G2 why I'm not really tripping on it very much. I have a, a lot of little nitpicks. And what, so before we got the announcement of the G2, we had the rumor of the G2. And it was like, oh, they're working with Valve. They're working with Microsoft. HP is working with Valve. They're working like this could have been like this miracle thing. So I had all these expectations. I thought that the G2 was going to have steam sensors as well. So I thought, you, you know, so I, I thought you could just use Steam VR with it. So I thought that was going to be really cool. Another thing I thought, too, is way before we got the G2 or heard about the G2, Qualcomm 
has this like standalone prototype that they let people from CNET try. People aren't talking about this, but there's a headset out there. Somebody manufactured a headset, um, a screen panel that is 2880 by 2880. And I kind of feel like that resolution would That's look pretty good. Yeah. Go. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm in a valve index and it's like, yeah, okay, I can get a G2 and I get this bump, but I I almost I feel like in the year 2021 there's going to be some big headset that's right around the corner and I feel like I'm waiting for that. Um and part of the reason also the controllers. So you mentioned a lot about the tracking and everything. What about ergonomics? Because the the Oculus controllers, I've always said it they melt right into my hands. Oh, it's like it's like an that. extension of my my hands. Right, but it's very and similar. So, Actually, it's very similar. Really? It's like very so similar. So it feels good in it the feels, hand. It, it feels, feels good, good in the hand. Uh, some people have complained about the size of the ring. That's the only thing I know. I know that I've is a pain. That. Yeah, okay. I've, I've already whacked it twice just today, actually, by accident. Oh. Not just because it is huge. That that ring is huge. Actually, that is a pain. But uh, in terms of the ergonomics, yeah, it's it's yeah, exactly yeah. like it feels very similar to the Rift, like a big Rift controller. Oculus still okay, wins. Well, Oculus better. still Oculus but, is still doing still winning, I think. Yeah, for the yeah. for the another controllers, thing, yes. I'm sorry. Another thing I was also disappointed with in the whole deal is like Microsoft, right? I, I thought at a certain point in time we would get. Windows Mixed Reality 2.0, legit, a legit 2.0. I don't think this is a legit 2.0. I don't think Microsoft engineers spent a lot of time trying to create this, like, th they never came out with an announcement that says, right. this is Windows Mixed Reality 2.0. No, you're and right. I think you, you're we, nothing if, <laughs> nothing. Well, you get nothing from them. Nothing. Well, if we really had a Windows Mixed Reality 2.0, I think controllers would be completely redesigned completely redesigned controllers. I think we would have the tracking in the four corners the yeah. right way. And I think the tracking would be like, we can, we can say that Facebook, they've got all these engineers, they've got Facebook reality labs are spending crazy amount of money. They're committed. They are pot committed. Right. And I give them credit for that. But Microsoft has a lot of very intelligent, creative people over there as well. And I think that their tracking would be within range. And I think it would be better uh, than the than the tracking we got here. It's just a lot of little nitpicks. And then there's another thing too. Right. It's like the IPD range. So the G2 does have an IPD range, but it doesn't go to the degree that the Valve Index goes to. And so if you're in 16. my boat, yeah, yeah 68, 68, 68, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah but it still it should work. You have to try it out some fine day. Be fair, but is uh, the friend yeah. of mine who's got an IPD of 58. He's just bought a G2 and loves it. He's very happy with it. The G1. He couldn't stand it. He made it, his eyes strain his eyes after about 10, 15 minutes. It was that bad. So I guess maybe that extra sweet spot might help if you are a little bit outside the range on either side. I think perhaps. you should try it yourself. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'd love to try it. I, I have no like I have no qualms with trying it. Um, and the price isn't that bad. Also, though, what about this, though? You guys mentioned like the steam and all that. The one nice thing about having a Rift S or a Valve Index or whatever, if you're trying to get into like Oculus or Steam, it's pretty effortless. <laughs> and is is it's, that the I case think, with Wii? Like, I, I think it's okay. Like, I think actually, I think it's not so bad. So the Cliff House is okay, but you don't need to be in the Cliff House. If you want, you can just start Steam VR and start your game and everything is going to work out itself. So it's not so complicated. So if I see some people bitching about how bad the Cliff House is, it's okay, but you don't really have to be in the cliff house. You don't have to live in the cliff house. So, you know, I also don't care so much about Oculus Home because I, I start my games and then I'm in the game. I, I don't even decorate my place, my Oculus Home or what. And I don't decorate my, my Windows cliff house. I'm living in SteamVR <laughs> for me personally, right? But, um, yeah, so it's not so bad. But you know what, Tony? I agree with you. I really agree with you when it comes to Microsoft. I don't really feel that they're so into VR. Like for Facebook and for Oculus, you really know, okay, that is our thing. Like we do everything to make it freaking amazing, right? So like the, the software, it's just so beautiful. Everything works without a, without a problem. I could give an Oculus Quest 2 to my mom and she would be able to set it up and play Beat Saber. Not the same with the G2, you know? Like it's like, it's 
Oculus is owning that. They are so good at what they're doing, and Microsoft is really far behind. You're right. Why do they not position the cameras correctly? Why do they use visible light for tracking? Why not infrared light like Oculus? Could be patents. We don't know the details, right? But it just feels Oculus is all over that, and they are also so much better with marketing. They do the marketing so great, right? With the conferences and everything, everything you really know, okay, there's a new game coming out and they are really into it. For Microsoft, you hear nothing about Windows Mixed Reality, nothing. They, I think, yeah, it's crazy, they, right? they, want to, they want to be involved, but they just want to hold back and let yeah. everyone kind of- but It's so bad. Know, they're they're, they're exactly, too scared. Yeah. They're just, you know, they, they want to be involved, of course, in case it does go crazy yeah. so that they can't start from scratch. But I think what's quite telling as well with the new Microsoft Flight Simulator, there was absolutely no intention of that getting VR straight away until people like me and a lot of the uh, guys on a lot of uh, the VR forums were like, what the hell? You're, you're making a flight sim and it's not going to have VR. What? The, that's not. That's just so wrong. And then they were like, "Oh God, yeah, maybe." They didn't even give it a second thought. And it's that, as well as like you mentioned with the Windows Mixed Reality software, which is, it's st it's still being powered by coal. It, you know, it's really it's it's it needs an update, a huge update. It needs to be integrated somehow. Um, that I feel like, yeah, Microsoft is there, but they're kind of like just just watching from the sidelines a little bit. I think. It's this just shows the amount of investment, though, and this is why Facebook will, at the moment, they've got a product like the Quest 2. Nobody else has. Nobody else can because no. they don't want to invest the amount of money that Facebook are putting into it. That's that's what it comes down to, I suppose. Agreed. So, Gary, what about what about your feelings about the G2? Would it, this be something that you would like to purchase, or how is your general feeling towards the G2? <laughs> If I wasn't happy with the index, which generally I am, I don't, you know, I'm not completely enthusiastic about the controllers, but they're okay. Um, then it would be something I'd consider, but I don't think I'm in a position where I, I want to buy one. I'd love to try it. I would absolutely love to try uh, Reverb. And mainly, um, not that I, uh, you know, the, the, the tracking stuff like that will probably be fine for 90% of the games that I play, um, which are, you know, No Man's Sky and stuff like that and, and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not really one for like uh, first person shooters, online competitive shooters, where potentially that uh, thing where it can uh, occlude the controllers or something. Although, Steve, I know you said that that worked pretty well for you when you tried it with Medal of Honor. So. Honestly, it works yeah, I, really well. I, it, it does, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Um, but, but the reason I'm mainly interested in it is for something like Elite Dangerous. I would love to try Elite oh, Dangerous. Oh, it's great, honestly. Yeah, it's good. It's, yeah, Star Wars brilliant. Squadrons also, it's so beautiful oh, yeah. in the Reverb G2. It's like incredible. And even Alex, if you, you have to play it again with the G2, it's ah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> have a look. You should have a look. It's really amazing, and you know I'm so yeah, excited I'll, because I'm a VR enthusiast. You know I want companies to give me that stuff. <laughs> no, Gary, Gary, when when this lockdown rubbish is finished, I'm gonna have to come over with my GT. Oh, yeah. suit. I'd, yeah. love, I'd love for you to try it out because uh, I mean yeah. it's my fault. So one that's day, gonna happen. <laughs> one day I'll, I'll try one. I'm, I'm determined to do that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm not. I don't think I'm in a position where I want to purchase one at the moment, only because, you know, I'm generally happy with the index. Yeah, the, the index video card great. thing, too. What about that, though? Like, do you really need to buy a new video card? Like, I got a 1080 Ti. That's OK. Oh, fine. Yeah. I have a 1080 Ti, too. And um, yeah, it's it's good. It's really good. It depends, of course, on the game. If you want to play DCS, then no good, probably. It depends yeah. no on... No cards good enough for not, DCS. Not gonna, okay, <laughs> right, right. You know, Steve, you know, oh, right? But yeah, um, yeah you'll be yeah. fine with your 1080 Ti. It's, it's working well. Yeah, so overall, I really believe that we should um, appreciate the G2 for what it is. A very, very nice headset. Not perfect, not without it compromises. But for the people who want to have, like, the best-looking picture in VR, that's it right now. And for all the others, go for the Quest 2 if you're not bothered by the Facebook stuff. If you're bothered by it, go for the index. So it's amazing that we have all these different options. Let's talk for a moment about the launch. <laughs> Probably one of the worst launches ever for a headset. And um, yeah, probably it's even worse than the G1 launch. Not sure, but lots of things went wrong, right? So first of all, people ordered this device like month and month ago, probably because of this guy as well. And uh, yeah, and, and unfortunately, they're still waiting for that headset, right? And 
things are they, they, there were so many unforced errors in my opinion from from HP right some people were able to buy the device off the HP website just recently a couple of weeks ago in the U, in the UK in in Germany in France I think even in in the US and they got it the next day and people who waited for month and month they are still waiting for the device and well they have even paid it right so so they gave uh, uh, like they gave a loan to HP without getting anything back but like uh, like like a like a kick in the ass for for other people getting it first and then uh, now p some people are getting it and things are not working out they connect it to their computer and it doesn't work they have a black screen because they have the wrong motherboard or they have an AMD graphics cards the, the the screen is black honestly speaking that is a bad launch it's a really bad launch and i'm really sad about it because the headset is so good but people can enjoy it and people are angry so so what is your perception of the launch? Do you also think it's a bad launch? Is it the worst in history? What are your thoughts, guys? I'm just frustrated. Like, because this headset is so amazing. It's so fantastic with its um the clarity is something that I think can never be underestimated. People think about comfort all the time with how the headset feels on your head. But actually your eyes are probably one of the most important parts of the VR thing. And it, you know, if your eyes are happy suddenly you've had an extra hour's playtime and you feel great when you take it off. You know, I, I think, I'm sure we've all been there where we feel a bit fuzzy after being in VR with other headsets, but with that, I feel great. So anyway, completely lost the, uh, the subject now, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. No, but that it, part, it's the just, eye thing, yeah. I always thought it was the uh, refresh rate that would wear on your eyes. Like if we had a, if we had like a refresh rate of like 300, 300 hertz, we could play for a super long time, but like 90 hertz, 72 or whatever we're doing, that like wears on our eyes, no? Uh, for also, me, yes. yeah, I just, um, when, when you have, when you're not, when you're looking at screen door, and I suppose for me, being a flight simmer, I'm looking at sort of the sky and things like that, and you really notice screen door and certain colors, it just, it wears on me after a while, and I start to feel quite fatigued, my eyes are tired, uh, I don't get that in the Reverb G2, and I think, no other manufacturer is 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 uh, pushing these important aspects. That what I think, as I said before, is the line in the sand. It's the it's the new benchmark in PC based VR. We are now at that level. We can't go below that. So it, it's a fantastic headset, but um, and yeah, I'm frustrated because it's now got this. It's tainted even before people have got it in their hands. Exactly. You know, because, exactly the uh, same feeling here. I'm like, no. What what are you doing? I, I'm, honestly, I'm generally I feel feel so so much for everybody who's pre-ordered in good faith given hp their money and then you know, in, in what was it june time or something and and yet some guy who's just gone oh look I'm, oh it's uh, for sale on the hp site i'm going to buy that and it gets delivered to their door the next day oh that's not cool so so agreed you know i have, I have the same feeling like a couple of months the feeling here in germany was oh wow hp is the savior of vr because we are like we don't like Facebook here in Germany, right? So we're not so into that. So we thought like, wow, this is so cool. They are the the they are the shining beacon now of VR. <laughs> yeah, they are they're going to rescue us from from having to put in our data and giving our data to Facebook. And everybody was so happy and like pre-ordering and everybody was so looking forward to to the thing. And Unfortunately, here in Germany, and I th I'm sure in other countries as well, if I look into my um, mailbox, <laughs> they're not so happy anymore because F HP has really fucked it up. And, and on, this, on this podcast, we can totally curse and everything. I don't care. <laughs> I don't give a... Yeah, you know what? Because <laughs> I really think that, that HP has really, unfortunately, like, like had a very bad launch and fucked it up here. Because they really, they like had all the goodwill of the people. People were rooting for them for HP. Yeah. It's so happy, right? Amazing headset, fantastic, fantastic graphics, and the the same sound of the Valve and everything super. And if they would have had such an amazing launch like the Quest Two, wow, nobody would be bitching in, anymore about them. They would people would still so enjoy true. it, right? So I think they have shoot, shoot shooting themselves in the foot here with that launch. And the thing is, they had a really bad launch with the G1 as well, right? Remember last year, like like Steve, you, you had the device, it didn't work, right? So they should have learned from it. And they had so many months to get it right. And honestly speaking, you can't say, oh, it's corona 
Facebook also had Corona and they made a beautiful launch with the Quest 2. You know, people pre-ordered it and people got it on the 13th of October. So I really don't think HP can get away with Corona, Corona here and there. So I'm really sad about that failed launch. And for the G3, I'm not sure if I can like recommend it like so much as I recommended the G2, right? Because really, they really have fucked up the, the G2 launch and I'm unhappy about it. So yeah. What do you what do you guys it's, it's, think about it? It's getting into Pimax territory again. Yeah, isn't it, unfortunately, really? I'm really unhappy yeah. about that. So, I, in my opinion, they really have to make up for all the people who pre-ordered, give them fifty dollars cash back, fifty pound, everyone, right? Because they really fucked up that lounge. What do you think, Gary? What should they do? Um, well, I just wonder if VR headsets are difficult to launch because we we had this like <laughs> at the beginning, like with uh, 2016 with the CV1 and the, I mean, even the Vive, even the HTC Vive, that wasn't a great launch either. They, it was better than the CV1. They rolled it out in waves, but it took so long. Even if you were in the first 10 minutes of ordering, pre-ordering the HTC Vive, it t still took you like weeks to get your, your headset, a couple of weeks, you know. Um so there's something about it. I think part of it is the amount of investment that a lot of companies are willing to put into this very niche kind of product that they perhaps skimp a little on these logistics kind of things, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. You right. know, one thing I think, too, though, like in defense of Hewlett Packard, I don't believe they anticipated the kind of demand that actually ended up happening here. Because I think part of the thing was when the G1 came out, that was something that hardcore PC VR enthusiasts knew about. But like average VR people didn't really like you'd have to really be paying attention to know about that. But with the HP Reverb G2, it kind of like hit uh, mainstream VR a little bit more because Everybody was like, compare. it was all about the comparison between do you get a Quest 2, do you get a Valve Index, or do you, do you get the new G2? And so it got pushed up into this like spotlight, and I think a lot of people were like, okay, resolution's really high, it's cheaper than the Valve Index, it's a little bit, and I don't have to do the Oculus thing, there's no Facebook. I think maybe the Facebook thing, that kind of combined... And they got a tremendous amount of demand, and they're just totally unprepared for it. And then to sell it to other people early, that sucks. And then also a lot of people pre-ordered their HP G2 and then sold their current headsets and were like right. slumming it with exactly. like a PlayStation <laughs> VR or something, thinking they'd only have to slump for exactly. like a month. And then it turned into a five-month slum. Right. Yeah, my, my friend, he sold his Rift S, and he's been without a VR headset for about what four months now and i <laughs> just i really feel for him right you know, it's it's just not cool so all, I, I totally get it people are really unhappy people have now a bad feeling towards hp and also towards the device even though it doesn't deserve it actually i think the device is amazing and i just hope that <laughs> hp can can handle the situation better now give cash backs make people happy again because they really need to make people happy again and then the more people will have it, they will find out themselves how good that device looks. They will find out themselves that the tracking is not a nightmare. So the thing is, it's going to be, it's going to get better and better over time. The more people have it, and then it's just going to be another great option. But HP, if you're watching this podcast, and probably you are, you really have to make up for it. And that is really what the big message that I want to send to HP. Think about how you can make up for it, probably a longer warranty time, probably a free game. Why not give Alex to, to the pre-order people? Just show you care about this community because this community is the one that's going to say, am I going to buy the G3? Yes or no? After this launch, probably not going to be a pre-order, to be honest. Yeah, all right. That was, that was the topic of the HP Reverb G2. And now we're getting to our last topic. And before we get to our last topic, to all the people who are new here right now, we have 265 people watching us in that very first episode of the Next Dimension podcast. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. And this is going cool. to happen every single week now. I had hoped for 200 people watching this, but we are 265 people now. Thank you for watching the show every Saturday at this 
this time. Make sure to be here. It's only going to get better from here. But I even have the feeling this show is already amazing for, for, for it being a first show. So for all of you who are new here, this is also a show where we want to involve you. And that's why we have some polls down in the description of this video where we ask you, what is your headset that you're using, that you're using right now? What headset are you going to buy? How did you like Medal of Honor? Did you buy it, yes or no? Did you play less than one hour? Did you play longer than three hours? Please answer those questions because at the end of the show, we're going to reveal all the results and it's going to be pretty interesting to find out what you think of Medal of Honor if you played it and, and what, you, what headset you have and what headset you're going to buy. So absolutely, if you're watching this live right now, check out the description of this video. You're going to find the questions and then you can simply click on the answer, uh, on the answer link and you can join the poll and well the answers are going to be revealed the results are going to be going to be revealed at the end of this show all right but now now we're going to get to our next topic and the topic is medal of honor above and beyond a new game and well the game is costs quite a lot. It costs like $60, which is quite a lot, right? It's it's quite a big sum of money for a VR game. For a normal 2D game, that is about normal, right? But for VR, yes, it is a bit on the expensive side. And um, well, lots of, um, well, um, it's very polarized again. What we hear right now, lots of bad reviews, right, on Steam. And lots of people like really going crazy about the game. And I want to ask you guys first. How about we start with Steve? What are your first impressions after having played for a while? Yeah, well, I've actually I've played about just over two hours of the game now uh, in the Reverb G2. Um, and for me, first of all, it's just fantastic to end the year with another AAA uh, title for VR, you know, for PC based VR. I think it's a great way to end the year. Um, I, um, personally, I just feel, I don't really understand. I mean, if you just push the price aside for a moment, cause I think that's a big deal. Yeah. We're going to, to talk about this in a moment. Yeah. As well, yeah. But if you just, just ignore that for a moment, just the game itself. Um, some people disagree with me here, but I actually like how it's, it's slow to start. You know, you get a feel for it, you get an atmosphere, atmosphere, uh, and uh, I just feel like some games put you straight into the action and that's great. But I just feel because it's, you know, the, the topic and the, the way it sets its scene, I, I do feel it does that really well. Even like the tutorial elements, I'm, I'm not going to give anything away, but I just very ingenious actually, because all the tutorial elements like, you know, to move around and to change your sort of the camera shake and the snap views, all the things that matter, the locomotion, it's it's actually part of the process of the story, which I think is really clever. It's those little details that I really like personally, um, and I just feel like, as well, when you're holding the gun and the, the actual weapons, the different type of weapons that I've experienced so far, because I've I've only played two hours of it so far, but um, feel really good. They they all have a different feel. Um, the mechanics feel natural to me and i'm not the best shooter in vr sometimes you know i'm not i haven't got the great the best aim but it just feels like when i'm going down you know looking down the sites those you know iron sights or in the snipe the sniper rifle i think there's been a lot of work gone into that to make it feel natural uh and yeah i, I think above all for me personally is a lot of games out there particularly maybe it's not just vr but just general triple a games focus so much on making the game pretty making it look you know graphics and making it just the best thing ever to visually but f fall down on the characters that you know that's so important to actually get an idea of um sort of the, the real grit, gritty storyline i think that's the, for me i think it shines there really well i think that the, the character um sort of I'm, I'm just warm to them straight away you know uh i think that's Ollie. a really important part of it <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, he's so young. Can't stand him. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, 16. Oh yeah, God, 16. Oh, no. you're giving it away. Oh, oh my God. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> but yeah, well, when I'm in the back of the truck and we're going to that uh, first mission, I just, you know, the, the, the atmosphere is, is just, you know, off the scale for me. Maybe it is because I'm in the Reverb G2. Maybe if I played it in the Rift S, it'd be a different experience. I don't know. But. You know, it just feels like a top draw quality AAA game to me. Um, although 
yeah i do think it's too it's too it's very expensive <laughs> it's, but i i get why it is because there's not many developers out there that are dipping their toes into a game of this high fidelity I, i'd imagine the r d you know work that went into this game they have to get their money back from this because it's it's a real it's still a niche we're still niche aren't we very PC niche VR. super niche <laughs> So, yes, to make a game of this level of quality, and it feels like I'm in my own World War II, I'm, I'm in my own, you know, I'm in Private Ryan again or something, you know, but I'm in VR and I'm the main character. It feels like that for me. Um, but it does cost a lot to, to make a game like this. And it's and it's a risk for them as well, really. Yeah, of course. So I, so I, I get why it's the, the price is what it is, but it's still a bit oh, salty, uh, isn't it? It, hurt, it? it hurts It hurts quite a lot. Does, yeah, I, I think so, to be honest. Gary, but overall, first impressions, really great. Okay. And, and, Gar and Gary, how about your first impressions? You played it in the uh, index. Yes, that's right, yeah. So um, the the thing about this game is uh, maybe I went into it with the wrong idea anyway. I want to get onto a couple of things like performance and stuff like that. But, but just talking about the game itself anyway. See, when I think of a, a Medal of Honor game, I think of it primarily being like a first-person shooter, uh, a, a gameplay, very much gameplay kind of game. And this, weirdly, and I don't know if anybody else has made this comparison because it seems like such an obvious one to me, but this is almost like a blood and truth version of Medal <laughs> of Honor. You are going through a, a narrative experience, at least at the beginning. Okay, so I need to caveat this because this is the beginning and I know it opens up after a couple of hours, um, a little bit beyond this. But the first couple of hours... Um, I would say that you are, it's a narrative experience with intermittent parts of gameplay, which is very much how Blood and Truth worked. Um, but I think Blood and Truth did it slightly better. Now, that's not to say that I really dislike this game because I think I enjoyed Blood and Truth, um, <laughs> in all honesty. But I wasn't going into this game thinking this was going to be that kind of experience. I was thinking it was going to be, first and foremost, gameplay with a little bit of narrative to guide you through. And I'm somebody that really loves narrative in games if it's done in the right way. And for the first two hours or the first you know hour and 45 minutes, I think, to be fair, that I've played, this game is in isn't achieving that balance quite right in my opinion now you know next week i could change that opinion when i've played a little bit more and it's and it's opened up but at the moment i don't feel that way it doesn't you know it's not a, a game which i want to completely destroy or anything because i think it's got a hell of a lot of potential what is there um is is really nicely done it's it, it's weird actually there's parts of it which are really nicely polished and then there's other parts which maybe are a little bit janky um in a weird way it's like for example when i am sitting in one of these trucks sometimes i can move my body i'll look down and my body will move with my head as i as i move around other times i'll look down and the body will be fixed and mm, if right, i move my head out right. of the the positional the body will remain fixed which is a weird thing when it's almost like they've not activated it on one scene and yet they have on another um little janky things like that but you know initial impressions i would say that it wasn't really what i was going in expecting it, it, it's it's okay, but I, I, it really wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be more gritty. This is almost like a, it feels like almost like a cartoony kind of World War II experience in some yeah. ways. <laughs> um, I was expecting a more gritty, you know, hardcore experience, perhaps. Right. The, the animations of the faces are a bit disappointing. I thought, when, you know, some are, yeah, um, some are, yeah. yeah. When you compare sort of, I don't want to compare it to Half-Life, Alex, but I mean, that is the the, the, the benchmark for yeah. PC games, isn't it, really? And yeah, it didn't give me the same wow factor, although the environment itself I thought was really cool. Exactly, uh, yeah. I was going to say, actually, just speaking of Half-Life, Alex, what you were saying there, um, I think the environments are actually reminiscent in some ways of Half-Life, Alex. When I'm looking around at the buildings, I think yeah. they look fantastic, yeah. Right. And um, how about how about you, Tony? You're, you've looked into it, right? You're not so deep into the game. You're probably one hour in, like you have just finished the tutorial and like this, right? Yeah, just, just barely past the tutorial. So I've only gotten into a little bit of action where you're actually shooting uh, Nazis and stuff like that. Um, so it's interesting because the first day I've played this game is today. Today's the first day I played it. And over the last couple of days... 
I've heard like all the complaints and everything. And it's just kind of like just people piling on left and right. Right. <laughs> and that affected my perception going into mm-hmm. this thing. So everybody kind of just really were super negative on the game. So when I got into it, I'm thinking, this isn't that bad. What's everybody <laughs> complaining about? Because for me, I haven't had any performance problems. And you hear all these people talking Maybe. about performance problems, and I'm on a 1080 Ti. I'm not on like these like super high end rigs. Just, just, just quickly. I oh, know. I'm sorry to interrupt, okay. Anthony. Just quickly. Oh, I have got a 3080 now. <laughs> so congratulations. This is really weird. <laughs> Get out. This is really weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I'll talk. I want to talk about performance. But yeah, go ahead. You you carry on. Yeah, but lot, lots of people are complaining about performance, and so far it's been beautiful, so I don't know what's going on there. But um, one thing I do find weird about the game, kind of what Gary was talking about towards the end there, is I thought it was going to be more of a serious, like like more serious kind of a game. And, it, it do, and the cutscenes are serious, but when you're actually in the real game itself, it does seem kind of arcadey. It kind of seems like like you're kind of like in an arcade shoot 'em up, you know. And it's almost like a shooting gallery. Like Nazis are streaming in, um, and when they're running around, they kind of run funny. And I feel like the scale of their bodies are a little bit weird. There, there's something a little bit weird about scale. Like I noticed this one. Um, I'm laying in my hospital, you know, I'm laying in the hospital bed or like when I was in the back of that truck and and you're driving and you got the guy sitting right next to you. And it's like, I'm looking at this guy and I'm looking at his head and his head seems like (laughs) ginormous to me. There's something about the scale of VR games that we need to eventually figure this out at some point, because there were other humans that I was standing right next to. Like at one point you're at like this table and they're like talking about the resistance. And there's a lady standing right next to me here. And there's people standing over there. And like the lady standing right next to me, like her size and everything, she seemed like a real human that was standing right next to me. But in other parts, scale seemed really weird. Zombies, uh, zombies, (laughs) the Nazis (laughs) kind of running very weird. And, um, but the gameplay, like actually shooting my gun and having the bullet hit the Nazi and like a little bit of blood, (laughs) like that felt good to me though. Like, like (laughs) it felt like not just in a, a morbid way, but it felt good. Like, like, I feel like I'm having like a good interaction. Like it has a good arcade feel. Yeah. 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 Um, (laughs) So and the graphics I think are pretty good. I don't know. I'm kind of all over the map. Honestly, it's hard for me to have an opinion. And then I didn't shell out my own sixty buckarinos, and and that does change the game. You know, people that are are putting their money out. Like you, you buy so many like 1999 games and 2499 games and 2999 games, and some of them are really freaking good. <laughs> so when they finally get to a sixty dollar game. You're expecting a freaking miracle, man. It's right, got right. to be incredible. Totally agree. Totally so, agree. For me, is, what is the actual campaign and uh, length in terms of in terms of hours? Is it because that, like that to me is the tenish, key. It's like tenish hours. It's like it's yeah, good. That, it's really good. Actually, I think I, it's I, for VR is good. I think that's quite short, to be honest, for sixty. Yeah, right. For money, VR, it's not that for, bad. For VR, yeah. for VR, it's pretty pretty good. Yeah. So, anyway, so for my for my thoughts, first of all, I think for me it's funny to infiltrate my German friends. Yeah. So I can totally understand all of that, <laughs> <laughs> all of the enemies, which is a good feeling. Yeah. So they totally have no idea that I can totally understand them. So I have like an edge here. Uh-huh. <laughs> and the good thing is, like for me, I could play that totally without hearing anybody else's opinion. I got the game earlier. Uh, I'm in the lucky position, and I could simply play it totally free without the this kind of like shitstorm. I would even call it the shitstorm <laughs> that we hear out there right now. So I could simply enjoy it to- completely unaffected, and I probably played like three hours. And for these three hours, I can tell you that I think the beginning is too slow. I really believe the beginning is a bit strange. It feels like, okay, you hear like, you see like a long cut scene and then you are in it for like one minute, you shoot one or two guys and then you're out again. It's a bit strange. And I feel like for the pacing, the pacing, they didn't do a good job. And I really, I honestly think 
that lots of people have only played this for like 30 minutes or half an hour, uh, like uh, or one hour or one hour 30 minutes, and then they they feel disappointed and they gave a negative review on Steam. And probably I have the feeling that in one week it's going to change a lot because I'm now like at three hours and it's not a shooting gallery anymore. It's way better. You do lots of cool things. It is really not just, okay, the Nazis run at you in a funny way and you shoot them. No, <laughs> it's not true. The beginning, the very beginning, you could have this perception and probably it's a mistake to have built it like this. Probably they really wanted to get uh, like totally beginners into it. Like, oh, this is VR and here you shoot. Probably that's the position they were in when they started to program this game and probably they started to program this like three years ago. So that is wrong. The, 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 the beginning is slow, really. Totally agreed to that. But later it picks up considerably. And even now at, at the th in, like, in like hour three, it's not so short anymore. It's cool. I really think it's cool and it picks up totally and it changes. The game gets way better and it so much picks up. So I wouldn't be too surprised if those people who played it then for five, six, seven hours, they go back to Steam and they're going to change their rating and they're going to say, guys, I was wrong about that. And we had this kind of thing before. Can you remember Hell Split? There was... It was like so, the, the first reviews were so negative. People hated it. People didn't want to buy it. But then, over time, people understood the game better. There were some updates. People loved it. And now it's a super highly rated game on Steam. So I honestly, I don't quite appreciate that shitstorm right now. Because, just like I said before, with the tracking of the G2, in these times that we're living in right now, it either must be like, wow, it's the best ever, or wow, it is like a pain in the ass. So I read now like, wow, um, here, they should be ashamed of that game, w w how terrible it, it is for VR. And honestly, I don't quite appreciate the five out of 10 from Road to VR at all. I don't, I really, I don't see that at all. Really not at all. Especially if you've played longer. And like, like um, in the German community, uh, the people who have played it longer or who even, even who have played the whole game, they so, so enjoy it. And they also don't quite get the beginning. Why is it so weak as compared to the ending, which is like really strong and amazing. You do lots of amazing things. So that is one thing that I believe is going to change the perception. Once people play it longer, they're going to appreciate it more. But I also agree that the developers have made some mistakes. So first of all, the pacing in the beginning is too slow. You think it's a gallery? Yes, you must go to um, hour three, four for it to become amazing. And they should have put more of the amazing into the first 30, 30 minutes to, to not have this problem that we have right now. Also, I think some things really do feel outdated right now. After Alex, after Alex, that is the thing. We are so spoiled by Alex. Yeah, we are. Yeah, take In right. Alex, you see some stuff, you're going to pick everything up and you can pick everything up. That's what we expect right now, right? But in um, unfortunately, that's not the case in Medal of Honor. So it does feel like a pre-Alex area game. It feels a bit outdated. Like you cannot pick up everything. So yeah, I'm used to pick up everything. So what the freaking heck is going on here right now? Yeah. Right. Sorry to put yeah. in. Yeah, I, I I agree with you on that. But um, also, I would say that it's not just um, that aspect that makes it feel a little bit outdated um, in terms of like VR mechanics. It's like it's almost like because of these set scenes, you are playing a part. You are playing a character within this narrative that they seem to want to to push on the player, rather than the player have too much agency within the game it's like you will appear at the beginning of a scene and then all of a sudden i will see where i have to go literally six feet in front of me it will ask me to walk that distance then once i get there it will fade out and then position me slightly differently yeah. within the scene so i can see all the characters correctly and, and this kind of stuff I, I feel like this this thing is a design decision that they made which feels outdated and you could be right could be because of games like alex that have pushed this a little bit further maybe maybe this wouldn't feel like that a year ago even i think I'm, i I'm think a year ago we would not have this problem that we would be so angry about this <laughs> what is up with the play testers though because like this is respawn entertainment man you're telling me you can't have some play testers that are working there yeah. 
that really know VR though. See, that's the problem. They go hire one of these companies that has never done anything VR, and they say, look, we're going to give you a big wheelbarrow full of money. Will you make this VR game? And then the company is like, huh, should I do this? And they're like, well, that's a nice wheelbarrow of money. And they're like, you know what? I'm going to take this wheelbarrow money, and hey, Team C, no, Team A, keep working on that. Team B, keep working on that. Team C, you're going to do this VR game. Yeah, I know, do the VR game. And it's like, that's what's going on here. And, and then the the... If they had some good testers, they would immediately know, okay, why can't I have controller-based controller movement rather than locked to my head, you right. know, and smooth turning? Like, these things should just be automatically in the game. Like, this isn't 2016. At a certain point, we got to start holding these developers accountable for, like, some seriously basic stuff. And I, I know this is... It's their first VR game, but like hire a couple VR nut jobs. They would have told you this on day one in their first play session. Right. But I think, you know what? Even Alex, they were in the same position. You know, they were first, uh, like first, they only had transportation. They didn't have free locomotion, but they probably had the time and not the pressure. Like now here with Respawn, they did have the time. Okay, we can wait for another half a year probably, right, for, for Valve because they are not so under pressure like other studios. Like Respawn, okay, they had a lot of pressure from Oculus. We have to make this happen now, right? And probably they could not change these things that the Half-Life Alex people could change. And that's why we do have these kind of things that now feel outdated after Alex. So that is one part. But I must still say if you play longer – you will still enjoy the game. You know, yeah, you can you, can you can get angry about you can get angry about little things. Yes, and I agree it sucks. Why is there an X that I cannot take? Right? That that sucks and I'm not happy about it. But at at one point for me personally, I got over these issues instead of like okay, look at, always looking at the bad thing and I honestly enjoyed the game. It's like I felt I'm in a blockbuster in a popcorn movie. Like and I That's exactly totally, how I felt. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed to be in that triple A <clears> game. <throat> I simply enjoyed that, and it's getting so much more better. And my friends who played the whole things, they told me it's getting even way more better than our three that I'm in right now. So I'm in the position. I really enjoyed it. The game mechanics feel great. Like getting my gun from here, getting my gun from here, getting my gun from here, reloading. Everything feels fine. It feels pretty much as good as Alex. And I'm simply enjoying my triple A experience you know what it feels like in a popcorn movie and you know what this blockbuster movie it has some plot holes but i still enjoy it for being a popcorn movie you you could be describing blood and truth there <laughs> yeah you're right you're right you're right <laughs> this is and that's how i felt about blood and truth i think part of my perception about this game if i'm being completely truthful about it i think i went in expecting something that this they weren't delivering really and that's probably You know, because, uh, you know, Medal of Honor, I've got, I've, I only think I've played one 20 years ago or whenever it was, you know, years yeah. and years ago. Yeah. I can't even remember it. So I went in with a certain expectation of what this game perhaps should be. And it, it wasn't that. And maybe if I went into it with more of a mindset of what they are trying to give me, then maybe I'd, I'd be more accommodating to it. Um, but yeah. It yeah, is right, funny because right. I haven't, lit, uh, before I played it, I had no expectation. I didn't even look at any reviews or anything. Um, that wasn't intentional. I just literally just installed it and went for it. And uh, I was just blown away with it. I thought it was great. I think it doesn't do anything mind-blowing. I think maybe that's the problem. We've seen a lot of, uh, you know, true sort of uh, next-gen mechanics with Half-Life. And uh, even, I mean, I mean, Stormland, when I first played that, that was like incredible. And the whole, you know, jumping and zooming across this landscape. And that was one of the first VR games For me, that was sort of a huge expanse, this massive world. A lot of VR games can be quite linear and sort of, you know, closed off, but you could just go anywhere. I'm kind of hoping as I'm playing it, I don't know if you can tell me a bit more about that, Sebastian, without, you know, yeah. uh, any, any spoilers, but whether there's, there's more, it, does it open out a bit more? And, you know, can you actually be a little bit more uh, sort of flexible with your play style? Could, can you like hide behind trees? Can you kind of go a different route? I think well, that... It's it's no it's no cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> yeah, That's in terms what we of need, I think. yeah yeah, but well, it's 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 an enjoyable experience, and I still have to play more. And you know, I really think that um, also us as a, a people who love PC VR, we should probably give it a bit more of a chance 
instead of now like like jumping onto the the Steam um, review thingies and just leaving our super bad harsh comment after we played the first hour or the first two hours because it's getting better. That's the one thing. And simply give it more chance. I believe that lots of these negative comments are because the expectations were simply too high. Like you love Respawn probably. Yeah? You love that for what they did before. And now you're expecting something like Half-Life Alex, but in that Medal of Honor universe. And you're not getting it. You're not getting it. That's true. You should probably appreciate what you get here. Not the perfect experience. Probably going to get better. But play longer. Give it a bigger chance. And and, and again, I, I'm really not into this like bashing. Yeah? Like, either it's amazing or it completely sucks. Why can't we enjoy it for what it is? Even our personal expectations were not perfectly met. But simply see the positive sides as well and give it a chance and play it a bit longer and, you know, I really believe that's what's going to happen. I believe that once people have tried it longer, played five, six, seven, eight, nine, or the whole game, I think then they will see, okay, my first, my first command after I played it for two hours doesn't represent the game. And I think it's, it's of course, Respawn's fault that they didn't make the first two hours amazing and that I cannot touch everything, right? But people, I think... Over a longer time, our community will appreciate for what it is. It's not this terrible game at all. And yeah, I think if we when we when we when we talk next week or in two weeks, whenever you guys are back here on the show, I think p- things will have changed. Will you agree to that you know, assessment? Steam, uh, I was just gonna yeah, say really yeah. quick, Steam has a two hour refund window. And so a lot of these negative comments are people that are like, well, I'm going to play it for one hour and 45 minutes. And oh, if yeah. it doesn't blow me away, F this. Right, and so that's right. kind of that kind of goes into the two hour review window. That's part of it. Right. I'm, I'm, yeah. also, I'm, qu- I'm quite different from you, Seb, on, on the whole. I, I actually really like a game to just, you know, show itself gradually and just, okay. get, you know, I, I like that slow start. I, I think it, uh, for me personally, uh, just it just gets gets you in that environment. But I must admit, you actually got a good point with it being, it should be more grittier. I don't know whether it is later yeah. on in the game, but it, it, it is a little bit cartoony, actually. Can, can <laughs> I, I, I know we've uh, been on Medal of Honor, but I did just want to touch on performance. I know you guys All right, yes. mentioned that you're not having too many issues with it. Um, do you know if you guys are playing on, so 1080 Ti, Anthony, Steve, is that right? Yeah, yes. a little mini one. I've got a little Zotac mini card about that. Oh, bit. yeah. It does well, actually. <laughs> Sebastian, what are you playing on? Is it 2080? Um, 2080 Ti. Okay. On a really beefy PC. <laughs> Which, so, so there's, there's something about this. Now, I'm, because I'm playing on 3080, there's something that people have mentioned in various forums about the NVIDIA driver issue with regards to this. So if you're not, you're not experiencing too many performance issues um, with this, there's an issue which NVIDIA have now sort of, um, you know, acknowledged in terms of any drive, the, the driver that was released around the time of the 30, the 3000 series cards has uh, an issue where some games can have dropped frames, random dropped frames, um, at irregular intervals. Now, I've not experienced this in pretty much any game that I've tried with my 3080, but that's really the only explanation I can think of because... I'm looking at the frame because I'm a bit of a FPS VR um, <laughs> whore as well. I constantly <laughs> look at the frame rates. Um, and all I'm seeing is uh, sections, it's fine. GPU load is fine. CPU load is fine. No issues whatsoever. And all of a sudden, I'll get a vertical purple bar, which indicates a drop frame for, for oh, no okay. reason whatsoever. That's and, interesting. Yeah, cause, yeah. Sorry, just to quickly say while you're on that topic, my fr- a friend of mine who's got more money than me, clearly, because he's just bought a 390. <laughs> okay, and, wow. Yeah, that's good. And uh, <laughs> he's getting exactly the same problem as you. Wow. Okay. Exactly now, this could be the driver issue then, because I wasn't sure if it was that or not, but that's what's happening. It's like the game is not struggling, and, and there are times when it does struggle, don't get me wrong. There are times when I'm going into reprojection anyway, but I can deal with normal reprojection. What I hate is just this hitching, which can occur just randomly when you, you, there's been no hitching at all. So I don't know if it's a problem with the NVIDIA driver issues, but it sounds like it could be. And that's the only explanation I can, I can make. The one thing um, quickly as well, if I can just ask you guys, are you playing with a dynamic resolution scaling? Right, or, I do. Or with yeah. The, dynamic. Yeah. 
do, do you know if you're because it, it seems to have three levels you've got low medium and high right. the dynamic i presume has more levels in between those um but if you turn off dynamic you can have it on low medium and high if you set it on low i mean i don't know how anyone can play that because it's ridiculously low resolution <laughs> medium is manageable but high is how it seemed to just default on my system yet i was still dropping these frames i don't know okay. if if have you know what I must confess, I actually haven't even yeah, I don't know. Uh, messed around off. with the yeah. graphics settings. <laughs> I, I spent about five minutes looking at the B17. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and just going, oh my God, look at this. Wow. This looks good, yeah. So, uh, I don't know, but I, I, no, I just can't. What about you, Anthony? But uh, Yeah, I skipped to the gun range. Like, I didn't go through the like all the different settings you could do right, and all right. that. So, I just, I like, I that, just whatever was default. Right, yeah. right. I mean, uh, even with this issue, I will say, like, it's it's okay. It's okay for the most part. It's not as bad as I was expecting hearing all the reviews, but these hitches are a bit of pain. Right. Uh, of course, especially if you've dropped $60. So let's talk about the price point. I believe that they are wrong about this. I mean, they, they really... They don't feel they, they didn't have the right feeling about that price. And you know what? I think they were afraid of telling us that price because they didn't. <laughs> Nobody knew how expensive this game is going to be. But right until the point where you could buy it, right? So so they probably hoped, okay, that that the people who, who preview it, they're going to rave about it like crazy, and then people are just gonna buy it, which didn't happen. And now they are in a bad position, right? Because they have this shit storm of people not liking the first one or two hours, the high price. So, wow, they feel bad right now. What do you think about the pricing? I, I don't think it would have got half as many negative reviews, which I Agreed. haven't seen yet, if it wasn't for that high price. You know, you expect a certain amount of, for your money, you expect a, an amazing game-changing experience, something new, something to bring to the table. This game doesn't do that, clearly. It's, it's actually, the mechanics are very similar to what we've experienced before in other games. Which is fine, but it's not because it's sixty pounds. It needs to it needs to deliver better than that. I, I, I must admit, I was quite shocked when I realised how much. <laughs> I, it, it's too expensive. It is. For, I personally think. It, right. For what it's delivering, definitely. Yeah, and because also because of Half Life Alex doesn't cost sixty dollars, it makes everything better in terms of how you can pick up things and how beautiful everything looks like. Yeah, we're spoiled, right? And for but sixty dollars. At, at launch, wasn't Alex sixty? Was at it? the launch? I think so. Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think. I think it well, was. Yeah. I have it's a better index, quality game, though. So, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a masterpiece, really. <laughs> it wow. is. It's just we get conditioned <laughs> in VR. Like, it, if you've been playing VR games since 2016 or 2017, you've gotten conditioned to these different price points, and every time a game jumps from a certain price point to the next price point. It, it'll get more money for the company, but it takes on a new level of expectation, you know? And so, like, if you buy a 1999 game, a game that's 20 bucks, like, you're going you're gonna to give that game the benefit of the doubt. You're not... Right. It's a difference. Exactly. When you buy a game for $29.99, you're expecting more. And, and then you go up to 60 like, that's Fallout 4. That's Skyrim. You know, that's like... That's like the uh, the holy grail. Like you come out with a game for sixty bucks, you better be. And and is it fair? Is it fair for us to act like this? Maybe not. It's a weird deal. Like this whole deal is weird. How did this deal come down? Why is this game on Steam? Like we don't know exactly how this whole thing happened. It could be possible that Oculus went to Respawn and Respawn said, "Here's what we'll do." We'll do this game, but we get exclusive rights on Steam, and it's going to release on Steam day and date, and we get 100% of that. And you get the money for the... Like, we don't know what kind of deal this was, you know? Yeah. Seems not a great deal for us <laughs> having to pay $60 for... Yeah. Well, it, it is a good... It's, it's getting better later, but yeah, at the moment, of course, people are not happy because of the first two hours and the price point. So, what do you think, Gary? What would what would be a good po good price point for for a game like this? I'd put it the same as Blood and Truth. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> to mention it again, but it's uh, it's, 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 it's different. Dollars. It's different later. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. That's fair enough. Yeah, I don't. I, I've not seen that yet, but um, from what I've seen so far, I'd right. put it at forty fifty dollars. I think that's new, what. Uh, new be. boss media guy in the comment there or girl. Sorry, <laughs> you never know. Uh, is said twenty nine ninety nine. I, I think that would be a, 
a great price point, to be honest. I think people wouldn't be complaining so much. I know, yeah, I know but it's Respawn cheap. Entertainment, yeah, they're not right. going to do a $29.99 no, no. game. No. I think $39, nobody would, would be complaining right now, and people would enjoy it and give it a chance over the first two hours, right? Or like even even $44 would be like, okay, let's 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 look deeper into it. And I believe at one point it's going to go to that price point, right? There's so many sales and stuff. But um, yeah, right now, I think they must hope that more people play it longer. <laughs> and also, I think for us, once we meet again, we will we will have played it much longer than now. It's very fresh right now, but it's going to pick up later. So I can just tell anyone who who has the game, play it longer, and and give it a bigger chance. Let's not be as black and white, right? I understand that our expectations have not been met. Totally get it, but it's still really. I still think it's like this. This uh, blockbuster movie, right, where you have your popcorn and yeah, okay, there is a plot hole, but overall, <laughs> it's still enjoyable, at least for me, and probably for more people who who are going to play it a bit longer. Patches will help as well. What patches? Pat exactly. Patches. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me pick up that axe in the beginning. That's the point. Why is there an axe? It looks like you can totally pick it up, but then you can't. <laughs> this is something. No, yeah. it shouldn't be there. No, the axe. No, get rid of it or make it. Like pick upable. <laughs> it is know. weird, isn't it? How it is there, weird, there are yeah. some things on in the game where you can just pick up and mess around with, and I was throwing stuff around. And then when you're at that table uh, with everyone, I'm, I'm like looking at the table, and everything's fixed yeah. on it. And I just thought that's a bit weird. Like, like it's almost like they couldn't be bothered to add those bits in. So yeah, it, yeah. Totally agreed. Totally agreed. Yeah. Okay. I think now we are already at the end here now with all our topics. We have talked about all our topics. It was a really cool show, and I'm already looking here at the polls. Let me just stop the polls now. The voting has stopped now, and let me let's have a look at the results. Let me check. So we have asked, we have asked our viewers what kind of headset they're using. Let me let me just um, have a look at the results here. Wait a moment, let me check out how that works. Everything is new. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, which VR headset are you using? Most, wow, we have so many people here who are using the Rift S and, and um, the Quest 2. They are the same. So we have overall, we have um, 93 votes. For the first, yeah, for the first time that we have the show, it's not bad. So we have two people using the OG Vive, two people using the Rift TV One, zero people using the Oculus Go, twelve people using the Rift S, four people using the Quest One, twelve people using the Quest Two, thirteen people using the Valve Index, one person using the Reverb G One, twenty-eight people using the Reverb G Two. All right, wow, Lots wow, of people. wow. That's, yeah, that's that good. is that is quite massive. Uh, one person using the Odyssey Plus, one person using the other Windows Mixed Reality headsets, three people using any Pimax headsets, four people using the PSVR, and 10 people using I don't have a VR headset yet. Okay, actually lots of people using the Reverb G2. Wow, that, I didn't expect that, that people have it already. <laughs> I'm going to say, if there's more people that actually had them, you know, wow. maybe it would be even more. Like, that I is... think your channel att attracts all the reverb G2 <laughs> yeah, lovers. It seems, yeah, I did, I did do quite your a lot. Your milkshake of... <laughs> brings them to the yard. <laughs> yeah, really, really, really. Okay, so which headset are you going to buy or did you already pre-order? We have 69 votes. Zero people going to buy the Rift S. Six people are going to buy or pre-order the Quest 2. 47 people are going to buy the Reverb G2 or have pre-ordered it. Well, quite a lot of people, okay. Um, two people are going to buy the Valve Index. Zero people are going to buy the Pimax 8KX. Zero people are going to buy the Pimax 5K Super and nobody. No, and 40 people are, are happy with what they have right now. Okay, lots of Reverb G2 people here on the channel. Good, good. All right. The next question was, did you buy Medal of Honor Above and Beyond? We have 76 votes. And eight people, yes, have bought it. 12 people say no, but will do so soon. 22 people say no and won't do it. And 34 people will wait for more reviews. Probably that makes sense, right? Like waiting it out until people have a better idea and have, until people have played it longer. Okay, the next poll. 
I played Medal of Honor for less than one hour and I, so 33 people, love it. Say two, two people say love it. Two people say like it. One person says don't like it and one person says absolutely don't like it and 27 people did not play it yet. Okay, so not so many people actually played it for only less than one hour. Then we have, I played Medal of Honor for three more than three hours and only a very few people actually played it for so long. You see, that's the point, I think. I think not many people played it for, long, so, for so long. We have 26 votes. We have two people who love it, one person who likes it, zero people who doesn't like it, and zero person who absolutely doesn't like it, and 23 people who have not played it for so long. So I think, honestly speaking, it is really still time for, for more people to check out that game. Really, for more people... To, to actually check it out. Yeah, cool. And that basically was it. <laughs> that basically was the very first episode of the Next Dimension podcast. Is there anything that you would like to say? Steve, Tony, Gary? Just, wow, I think it's been a great first episode. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me on. And you know, bring it on. Let's have more. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Too right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for, sure. thanks for having me on as a guest. And uh, yeah, I'm sure uh, if you'll have me, then I'll, I'll be on at some point in the future again as well. Uh, yeah, loved it. Cool, perfect. And for everyone who is watching this show live now, of course, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and if you would tell other people about the Next Dimension podcast. So I'm going to work really hard and I'm going to put that onto iTunes, onto Google, onto Alexa to have it there ready as an audio podcast. So that's going to happen in the next week. I'm going to let you know on my channel. Other than that, absolutely stay tuned and we're looking forward to see you in the future ep future episodes. This is going to be a very long running show. That is what I want to do and that what we all want to do. And thank you so much, Steve, Tony and, and Gary yeah. for being here on the very, very first show of the Next Dimension podcast. And I'm sure we're going to see you again here on the show as soon as possible, I hope. And I think, um, yeah, I think also our viewers would like to see you again really, really soon. That's everything we got for this show. Thank you so much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, take care. All right, that was the first show. And you know what? Let's for a moment, <laughs> let's for a moment, we're still live. We're still live right now, by the way. Cool. Um, let's for a moment just like relax and also say thanks to the audience. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much, New Boss Media. Thank you so much, Laurent. Thank you so much, Betafa. Thank you so much, guys. And how did you enjoy it, guys? Did you like it? Dear people in the chat who are still watching this. So this is some kind of cool down right now. So we're still live. Yeah, don't say anything <laughs> bad. And <laughs> just, want, just want to ask you guys, how did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy the show? Everyone who's in the chat right now. Um, yeah, and uh, and this this is not going to go into the audio podcast. This is really just now us and the people who are still here right now. So yeah, this how, should be for like your Patreon subscribers or yeah, something. Yeah, you're right. You're behind right. the scenes. <laughs> By the way, guys, who, guys who are watching this right now, please, please do subscribe to oh. to Tony and to Steve. Their channels are friggin' amazing. Right, so Thank go to VR much. Flight Sim guy. Go to go to VR three six five. The links are down in the description of this video. And I've please done. do buy, do buy Gary's book. It's fantastic. Check it out. The link is down in the description. And Fugazi says it was great. And and Slayblaze says good first show. And Matt Wookie says good stuff. Grand Pooba, great show. Les Marwick says good show. Yakumozo likes it. Thank you so much, guys. That's amazing. And also thanks a lot to to the people who have actually contributed. Um, Duked, um, 500 Swedish crowns. Caleb, $10. Thank you so much. Forsec Shark, Mr. Two Euros for another bottle of the great beer here. Cheers, by the way. Yeah, so great. It seems like people loved it. And it seems like, wow, my hope was 200 people on the first show. But we did like 250. Feels pretty cool, right? Yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. awesome. That's amazing. It's fantastic. Wow, cool. Super hyped. Yeah, really. Feels good, right? So I really enjoyed the first show, guys. 
And yeah, I'm so much looking forward to speak more with you and to, to follow VR and to follow AR with you guys. And again, this was such a great first show. Hope whenever you have time, you will be back. Yeah, the doors of the show are super open for you. And you are like the first ones. You are like the, the, the residents. Yeah, whenever We're you're grandfathered feel, in. You, you're grandfathered <laughs> in. Yeah, yeah. Totally cannot fire you guys. So <laughs> please. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think the audience also really loves you guys. And yeah, whenever you want, just let me know. I'm going to set it up so that you can just put your name in and then you're going to be there. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely because something like the um, I miss from not doing VR roundtable anymore is just talking to people about VR and if right. I can, you know, do that on a whim when when uh, I want to, then that's a great outlet for me as well because there's something that I don't really get to do in, in like in daily life really with, with people. Uh, nobody's really into VR as much as I am, but I know that you guys are, so this is fantastic. Exactly. Yeah, Same. totally. I totally agree. Like it's 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 quite a niche and. To be able to talk to like-minded people about VR, like you know, we're really like so enthused by it. It's hard <laughs> we're, to. We're total enthusiasts. Come on, <laughs> we're crazy. It, it's kind of hard to find that in everyday life, really. I think I know right. one person at work who loves it, but you know, that's about it, really. So yeah, yeah what it's, is wrong? What is wrong with everyone? What? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, really. Us? What? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> we are the guys who have something wrong. Thank you so much, Glenn <laughs> O'Brien, for another 10, 10 Canadian. That's amazing. Yeah, really, really. I also have the same feeling. Like I have really nobody from my normal friends, <laughs> normal friends, who likes VR. <laughs> nobody really no one not even, my wife also she's not into it i'm the only person so it's amazing to be it able is. to talk to you and to have to have the yeah to have the audience who enjoys it to be here right and ah it's great yeah cool so really cool first show thank you everyone for watching this even staying a bit longer for that cool down session here so yeah Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching this show and for all, everyone who's out there now watching this. Um, thanks for being here. 250 people watching this for the first show is amazing. And I have the feeling that this show is going to grow quite a lot. So hopefully all of you guys are, will, will be here next week. Same time, every week now, Next Dimension podcast. Remember it. And um, yeah, we're going to be in this show together. We're going to follow VR and everything. Thanks so much for watching and see you next week. Bye-bye.